Welcome to rainy Bowling Green, Kentucky, Houghton Smith Stadium for the 69th meeting all time between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, 100 miles of hate. It's the oldest and most played rivalry in Conference USA. Western Kentucky at seven and four, taking on the four and seven Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Graham Doty, Brandon Dowdy, happy to be with you on this chilly and rainy Saturday afternoon. It's senior day for the Hilltoppers. And Brandon, uh, taking a look at these two teams, first for Middle Tennessee. This is a squad that is led by their talent, uh, talented sophomore quarterback, Asher O'Hare. What a season he's had for Middle Tennessee. He has, and he had a lot of shoes to fill with the coach's son, uh, replacing a coach's son last year. So Asher O'Hare can do it all. He can run it, he can pass it. He leads the team in rushing, he leads the team in passing. Uh, talking to the coaches this week, they are very excited about the future of Asher O'Hare in Middle Tennessee. He needs just 86 rushing yards to reach 1,000 for this season. And on the other side, starting quarterback for the Hilltoppers, it's Ty Story making his ninth start of the season today. And Brandon, ever since he's been the starting quarterback, Western Kentucky's been on quite the roll. It just seemed like the offense has clicked with Ty Story under the helm. He's He's an Arkansas kid, and he's a tra grad transfer, playing in his senior, senior year here. Um, he's done an amazing job of, of controlling the game and protecting the ball and doing it, doing all the little things that a winning quarterback does, and that's why you, you know that he's gonna, you have a chance to win with him under the center today. 69th meeting all time between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. We'll step aside and have kickoff between the Hilltoppers and the Blue Raiders. Your show. Yes. Western Kentucky won the uh, coin toss. They elected to kick off to Middle Tennessee as you're looking at the head coach for the Blue Raiders. That is Rick Stockstill. In his 14th season, he has been a six time conference coach of the year, the longest tenured coach in Conference USA, he was a quarterback for the Florida State Seminoles. And Brandon, you played against him. What a job he's done leading this Blue Raiders program. He's done an amazing job. A lot of respect mutually uh, talking to these coaches this week. A lot of respect mutually uh, from each coach uh, on the staff. Offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, head coach. There's a lot of mutual respect in this rivalry, and I think that's what makes this rivalry so good uh, is, is having that respect. And there's Tyson Helton. He is in his first season, and he is making a case to be named the conference coach of the year this season. He's done an amazing job. Uh, bringing back an offense they had in 14, 15 when he was here and uh, really getting the excitement in, in, in Bowling Green back in football. And, and the job he's done uh, with the talent he's got, I mean, he's done an amazing job staying creative and, and uh, being a little bit more cutting edge than they were the past couple, the past couple years. Well, a storyline today, it will be the weather. It is currently 56 degrees. The rain is not going anywhere for the time being, wind blowing at eight miles an hour. Corey Munson kicks it deep, and a fair catch is signaled by McDonald. And we'll have a look at this Middle Tennessee offense for the first time. This is a Blue Raider offense that is averaging 26 points a game, just over 400 yards of total offense. And we touched on it. They are led by their talented sophomore quarterback, Asher O'Hara. They are dead last in Conference USA in time of possession, which is kind of unusual, which as much as they run the football. I think it's with the tempo. When you run a tempoed offense, you're gonna have some three and outs and when you're not clicking, especially. So O'Hare looks to throw on the opening play of the game and he's got a target wide open. It is uh, Mobley, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee with just his seventh reception of the season. And the Blue Raiders are in Hilltopper territory after that gain of 27. Look like a little, little check with me. Uh, Hilltoppers brought no pressure, zone coverage. Hit him on the, in, uh, on the seam route. O'Hare will now try to take off and run, and he falls forward for a gain of about three. So this is an artificial surface. The rain is coming down. What's the biggest thing that each of these teams want to accomplish in these elements today? I think number one is you have to protect the football. I mean, especially with two, court, two leading rushers for both teams not really being adjusted fully to the weather, a, a DB and a quarterback. What a move by O'Hara. Gets past the linebacker. 
That was Bailey that he got by and was able to run for a first down. Now that's impressive. He had nobody open downfield. Great coverage by the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Uh, Hare just using his athletic ability to pick it up first down. They even had a spy on him. That's the guy who, who he jukes out here, number 30. Uh, that's a spy. So your spy's got to make that play if, if you want to be sound on defense. It's actually Clay Davis, as you said, the spy on that play. Quarterback keeper for O'Hare, and there is D'Angelo Malone with his first tackle, gain of one, and that'll be a player to keep an eye on defensively today for the Hilltoppers. The reigning Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week. What a season for D'Angelo Malone. Leads the conference in sacks and tackles for loss. And, and guess what? He's still got another year. So um, very excited about this kid's future. He's going to be a heck of a player, a better player next year than he will this year just by how hard he works. Here's the first carry of the day. Handoff up the middle to McDonald. McDonald with just under 200 yards on the ground this season. One touchdown. Picks up a short gain to make it third and six. This is a good opening drive. You can see the tempo that we were talking to Tony Franklin about, offensive coordinator from Middle Tennessee earlier in this week, about how he was going to mix up the tempo a little bit. And they've done a pretty good job with it so far in this first drive. Here comes the pressure. Yeah, Hilltopper showing blitz up the middle. Let's see if they bring the heat. They back off. O'Hare with a clean pocket now takes off and stays on his feet and has a first down run for Middle Tennessee, and that's what he brings to the table, Brandon. See, you're going to do it. You're going to see a lot of that today. You're going to see man coverage around the board. The Hilltopper defensive coordinator Clayton White's going to say, "You know what? You can't. You guys can't beat us one on one with a spy on the quarterback." Again, uh, had a spy there. O'Hare makes a miss, and that's when you get yards. O'Hare looks to throw. Look at all the time he has. And now he's in trouble, gets around D'Angelo Malone and flings it up for grabs in the end zone, and it's out of bounds. That's the kind of pocket that you like to have back when you're playing. You get five seconds to work with. I feel like I'm watching backyard football right now. I used to play that as a video game back when I was a kid. That was uh, just a great athletic ability by the quarterback. He's only six foot tall, so he knows he doesn't have as many lanes to throw the ball. They just took a shot there on first down. Uh, Hilltoppers, again, man coverage. They've played man coverage every single snap this, this drive, and it's going to continue all day. So on second and 10 from the 24, this will be a quarterback run with room for O'Hare. He's got a first down before he's wrapped up by Devin Key. Actually may give him nine yards. So third and a yard coming up here for the Blue Raiders. Design runs. I know nothing about them. Can't analyze design runs. Not my, not my thing. It's a new day. It's a new decade here in college football with these design runs. These quarterbacks that are athletic. You can see that how it translates in the NFL. Number one picks. Uh, last two years are scrambling guys. Yeah, and look at what Lamar Jackson has done this year for the Ravens. Hands off, and it will be a close first down run for Mobley. And from the spot, he picks up the first down here for Middle Tennessee. What a drive this is, opening drive of the game. This will be the 10th play coming up here for the Blue Raiders. Amazing drive. I mean, a good mix of run, of pass, some pass that turns into run with a scrambling quarterback. But uh, Tony Franklin is one of the best in the business for a reason. With, you know, his resume speaks for itself with Jared Goff and those other guys. I mean, he's, he's a heck of a coach. Mobley off the right side, picks up three. Yeah, you did mention Tony Franklin now in his third season as the offensive coordinator for Middle Tennessee. He touched on and spent a lot of time uh, with Sonny Dykes at Louisiana Tech in California, also at Auburn when Tommy Tuberville was the head coach. Look at both of the coordinators for Middle Tennessee. A lot of experience. You're not kidding. A lot of experience and a lot of uh, experience even through their head coach. And the guys that he's hired have more, even more experience than he does. Another handoff, Mobley this time, a minimal gain to bring up another third down where Middle Tennessee so far on this opening drive is two for two on third down. I would, I would suggest here um, I would predict a little cut the field in half for your young quarterback. Uh, make sure that this drive ends with a kick. That is the number one goal for this drive so far. Hilltoppers look like they're bringing pressure. Might check out of it. 
but I would say it, this, this drive has to end with a kick, either an extra point or a field goal. Well, Middle Tennessee in the red zone. After a slow start in the red zone this season, they have scored on their last 21 consecutive trips in the red zone. O'Hare will throw over the middle, end zone, it's incomplete. A one-on-one -on -one coverage, nice coverage by Trey Meadows, the junior college transfer from Garden City Community College. A little chess game here early on. Uh, middle Tennessee, Tony Franklin calls a man beater, a man coverage beater. Clayton White counters with a zone coverage. Uh, O'Hare, that's a good job of making a mine or nobody throw in the red zone. When, when you talk about red zone football, you talk about touchdowns or checkdowns. That right there was a touchdown. If he didn't have it, he was running to a checkdown. So um, that's, that's a good fundamental football early in this game. Short field goal attempt for Kyle Ulbrich and Ulbrich's kick, it is good. That is his 10th field goal of the season. So now Middle Tennessee has scored on their last 22 trips in the red zone. Blue Raiders lead three to zero over West Kentucky as they march down the field on 13 plays on the opening drive of the game. Nine twenty-seven, first quarter. Middle Tennessee marches down the field on the opening drive of the game and uh, connect on a 26-yard field goal from Cruz Holtz. 13 plays, 66-yard drive that took five minutes and 33 seconds. And a strong start for Middle Tennessee to open up this game. Great opening script. And the assuming kickoff reeled in by Key, and Key is wrangled down at the 21. So now we have a look at this Western Kentucky offense for the first time. This is an offense that is averaging 25 points uh, per game, 372 yards of total offense per contest. And they are very good, Brandon, at holding um, onto the football for a long time. They're second in the conference in time of possession. This is an offense. They know how good their defense is for Western Kentucky and they do a nice job of taking care of the football. Not a lot of penalties either. They're top 10 in the country and fewest penalties per game. And already uh, before the first snap, the officials will blow their whistle. No flags on the field. Yeah, the, the Hilltopper offense really prides themselves on running the football. I think that's Coach Helton's ties with Tennessee last year was um, really trying to run the football first and keep their defense off the field as much as they can. And it's, it's been two of success this year so far. So first and 10, the ball is at the 20. Here's Gage Walker in his first season as the running back for the Hilltoppers gets dropped at the 24. And what a job this season for the Richard Junior from Tampa, Florida, Gage Walker. With that run, that is now 1,000 yards on the ground for Gage Walker. And it's, he's a DB. We got to remember that viewers at home. This guy was playing DB uh, not even six months ago, and now he's reading three techniques and making plays in a, at a running back position. First reception of the day for Lucky Jackson falls forward to the 30. That's a first down. Lucky Jackson most catches in the Conference USA this season. That's his 70th catch, which is also a career high for him in a single season. And this is a receiving combination led by Lucky Jackson and Jacor uh, Pearson. Both of those guys, one and two on Conference USA in receptions. Yeah, they do a good job of spreading the ball out here at Western. Free play. And Story's gonna take a shot and one-on-one -on -one down the field and he drops it in to Quinn Jernigan. What an unbelievable throw. It's a gain of about 22 if it stands and more than likely it will as it's an offside against Middle Tennessee. Yeah, he, tie story, one-on-one -on -one coverage, Quinn Jernigan on the outside, free play. We call that a, a gimme. Just do punt protection back there, throw it up as fast as you can, can't take a sack, just give us, give our guys a chance. Uh, tie story does that and picks up a first down, big play. From Middle Tennessee territory. On the ground to Walker. Walker gets stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. That is Khalil Brooks, a senior from Atlanta, Georgia, making his 29th consecutive start today. And now the rain is absolutely coming down. This might be the hardest that it has been raining in Bowling Green today. 
What's that like as a former quarterback yourself playing in these conditions? It's the things you don't think about. You know, you think about, you don't really think about, you think about defenses, you think about blitzes. Now you gotta really think about catching a snap. <laughs> that's number one. And so that's, that's like the biggest thing I think in timing of dry you know it's just there's a lot of moving factors um, and understanding what what route combos are they're running in and out routes are they going to be able to get them out get out clean but for me as a quarterback i like throwing the ball in the rain i know that sounds crazy but the offensive players they know where they're going the defense is reacting to you and that might cause a little bit of a um, you know, a miscommunication or a, a, a misstep so that people can slip I, I i don't think running the ball is the solution first third down for Western Kentucky, clean pocket for Story, fires it in traffic and it's almost intercepted. So it's fourth and 10. And that's another reason why I like throwing the ball because those DBs and those linebackers, they can't catch it. They aren't, they aren't practicing wet ball drills, catching the ball in the rain. So uh, a gift there, great defense, spy coverage they had. They had which is just a robber coverage, one guy in the middle of the field robbing any underneath, underneath guys or any uh, crossers over the middle. Do, do a good job of reading Ty Story's eyes. He's got to make sure that he holds defenders with his eyes a little bit better. Penalty marker down on the field. Timeout. And we have a Middle timeout Tennessee. taken by Middle, Middle Tennessee with 7.29 to play in the first quarter. Hmm. Middle Tennessee in front, uh, three to zero. What a start for the Blue Raiders. Score on the opening drive of the game and then force Western Kentucky to punt it. Playing with a lot of energy here. They are, uh, they have the momentum on their side. They're playing with a little swagger, a little energy. And remember, they got nothing to lose here. They're out of the bowl contention. They got nothing to lose. They're playing for a level of the game. Uh, and, and so far, you gotta be ready. At we have a timeout called on the field and uh, we'll take a break as well. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back to Houch and Smith Stadium, fourth and 10 for Western Kentucky. This is one of the best punters in Conference USA, Alex Haggerty, uh, averages 46 yards a punt, which is tops in the conference. Hilltoppers have punted it the fewest amount of times in Conference USA this season. Ty Lee back deep to return the punt for Middle Tennessee. Blue Raiders come after it a little bit. Haggerty gets it away, bounces inside the 10, and the Hilltoppers are on top of it. Down inside the three yard line. What a job by the special teams for Western Kentucky. Maybe that gives them a little momentum. Great punt, especially in the conditions. I thought I was going to be blocked <laughs> from the start, but great, great play. Um, that's, a, that's a hidden yardage play that's just not talked about that much. It's just those hidden yardage. Um, yardages that are in the inside the game that flips field position and make sure um, you know you stay ahead of the chain so as an offense coming out right now and in, in my mind as a quarterback I always want to get one first down and flip fit the position again if we punt it back go three and out and punt it back to them they get field position and they win the hit of yardage again O'Hara gonna take a shot out of the end zone looking for Lee and it's just over his head and you gotta like the Blue Raiders being aggressive. That, you're gonna see that. You're gonna see that today with a team that has nothing to lose. Double move on the outside. O'Hara just missed him by just a tad bit. Uh, safety was late to get over. Uh, but I like the aggressiveness, you know, in the minus territory, minus one, minus two, an offensive coordinator, an offense has to predict man coverage. The players late getting out on the field for West Kentucky. One of those, DeCorey and Darden, honorable mention conference USA a season ago. So second and 10, O'Hare with a clean pocket, floats one and double coverage, and it's incomplete. Devin Key on the coverage, Jaron Pierce, the intended target, and now it's third and 10. Two-man route there, just a deep cross. Uh, he lost his back in protection, so he didn't really have anything to hold the flat defenders. So the flat defenders were able to get depth and it looked like double coverage just because they didn't have any threat underneath them. Third and 10 from the one. Blue Raiders being aggressive, opening up two consecutive throws down the field, deep in their own territory. 
Play action, wants to throw a near side. He's got his man out there and it's dropped. He catches it, it's a first down. That is a great call. I thought they should have went to that on second down. They had the same, same exact look from Clayton White. Um, off coverage to the field. I thought an out route would have gave him the first down, second down, instead he goes for a crosser. A great throw by O'Hara. My goodness, that was, that's tight. That's an on-time throw. In the rain. In the rain. Uh, receiver's got to come down that for him, help him out. That was Jaron Pierce, went right through his hands. And now if you're Middle Tennessee here, you got to be very careful. You're not kidding, especially in this rain. I'd come after if I'm the Hilltoppers. Wow. Gets it away. Roger Cray reels it in at his own, at the uh, 44. Not much of a return at all, but Western Kentucky will start this drive in Middle Tennessee territory. It was 6.50 to play in this first quarter. Middle Tennessee holding on to a 3-0 lead. And last time the Hilltoppers had the football, they were, they uh, punted it away. As Ty Story opened up that first drive, two for four passing. Couple of carries for Gage Walker on that first drive. Just kind of get the feeling that the uh, Hilltoppers are trying to figure out how they want to handle this weather and I'm, the defense here for the Blue Raiders. It's a mix of both things. I think they're kind of setting up, looks like they're setting up some stuff for some double moves later in the game, but also trying to get their quarterback in rhythm. Here's Story on the run, and he picks up a first down as he runs for a gain of 12. So we know how good of a runner O'Hare is, and Ty Story certainly capable of picking up uh, yards on the ground. He's almost has 200 yards rushing this season. There's a Blue Raider down on the field as you get a look at that first down run from Ty Story. I think they're two different runners. They're both very good runners, but they're two different runners. I think Ty Story's kind of a gritty, gritty runner. Um, he doesn't really go down very easily. He always finishes runs uh, forward. He doesn't finish backwards. Where I think O'Hara, he's more of a make you guy, make a guy miss an open field. They feel pretty comfortable with him one-on-one -on -one with a safety or a, a linebacker. Um, so I, I think there's two different running styles, but they're both very effective in their offenses and they play key roles for their offenses. That's for sure. First and 10 from the 32. Blue Raiders show blitz and story. It's another quarterback run, and this time he's dropped after a gain of one. That time in on the tackle for Middle Tennessee. It's Brett Shepard. A lot of these runs are read runs uh, where you're reading a certain player uh, as a quarterback. You're just reading the defensive end. The last play, he was reading a three technique, which is the defensive lineman. That play was just a call it and haul it run for a quarterback run. That was just what we call... Um, no matter what the look is, the quarterback was going to keep that ball no matter what. Coverage. Story gets rid of it quickly. He's got his freshman tight end, Simon, who gets drilled immediately by Greg Great, sophomore from Miami, Florida, with now 31 tackles on the season. And another third down coming up for WKU. I think you're in two-down territory right now if you're the Hilltoppers. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked if they did a little run here, try to pick up half and then try to pick up the, 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 the first down on fourth down. Uh, I don't see them being overly aggressive just because of how Ty Story kind of forced that ball on third down last drive. They do hand it off to Walker. Walker has a first down run as he works it to the 23. And this will depend on the spot, Brandon. And from the spot, it will be about a yard shot. Another player down for Middle Tennessee. It's the safety. Highland Stribling, the junior Goodness. from Thompson Station, Tennessee. And we haven't really touched on it yet, Brandon, but this has been a Middle Tennessee team that has been absolutely crushed by injuries this season. Over 30 injuries to scholarship players, which is almost unheard of. Yeah, it's like almost like you're coaching a brand new team week, week in and week out. You know, that your team that you coached in fall camp is 180 degrees different than what it was now. And so... As a coach and from a coaching perspective, that's tough. I mean, you're losing guys. And we talked to Rick Stocksdale this this week, and he talked about the middle game. And, and you know, it's, it was just one of those games where they thought they were going over the hill and making a, a run and, and just were plagued by injury. And it's been tough. So with the timeout, we'll take one as well. Fourth and one for WKU when we come back.
Welcome back to Houston Smith Stadium as Kylan Stripling was being helped off the field. As you see there, they will put him into the blue tent. We'll try to give you an update on his status when we can. It's fourth and one. Hilltoppers are going for it. Converted 59% on fourth down this season. Story will keep and a story pops to the hole with a first down run. So Tyson Helton being very aggressive on the second drive of the game in the first quarter. Gives up the short field goal attempt to possibly tie it. He wants to go for it. And now WKU is in the red zone for the first time today. I think that's a good move with the inclement weather that they're having right now. Just a snap, a hold, a kick. Ball's a little heavier. I think it's a good call by Tyson Helton. Obviously because he picked it up. <laughs> Asked Coach Helton about Ty Story and how he handled uh, the weather as the Hilltoppers did practice in the rain on Tuesday. Wet ball drills as well throughout the course of the week as Gage Walker darts his way down to the 11. But Coach Helton did say Ty Story, he did experiment uh, with the glove on his throwing hand as you see Walker on that run, a gain of eight. But right now, uh, Ty Story, no glove on the throwing hand. Yeah, I don't like a glove. I never wore one, never really liked the feel of it. I thought it was a little slippier with one on. I like the feel of the ball, personally. It's a high snap. Here's Gage Walker. Plows his way down to the six. A first down run puts the Hilltoppers on the doorstep. See, I know that looks like a little run, a little four or five yard run there, but something to look at from the box perspective. That was an RPO, run pass option. Ty Story got the high snap, so 99.9% .9 of the time when the snapping and the timing is, is thrown off of a RPO, you just give the ball and no matter what the look is. But going back to that play in the Hilltoppers will, RPO, Middle Tennessee is not respecting that, that run pass option, pass part of that run pass option. So interesting to see going down the field. Hilltoppers bring in a tight end and an extra offensive lineman on this quarterback run for Ty Story in Middle Tennessee, all over it. All over that one. Making second and goal from the six. In the red zone this season, Middle Tennessee has been pretty, rather, West Kentucky's been pretty solid, 32 out of 39 for 82%. 22 touchdowns on the year. So last time, Hilltoppers, they brought in an extra offensive lineman and a tight end. This time they bring in some more receivers. Freshman tight end Simon is in as well. That's Jackson in motion. Man coverage. And Story will look to throw. Rolls out to the left. Story looking in the end zone. He will now try to shake free. He will not avoid Khalil Brooks, who's been everywhere for the Blue Raiders in this first quarter. See, man coverage. We're in a snap route. They were predicting zone coverage as a quarterback. The motion will tell you man coverage. Brought a back uh, behind you motion. DB runs with them. Ty Story has to understand that one. And number two, uh, senior quarterback, get rid of that dang ball. Throw that thing out of bounds. Throw it where nobody's going to catch it. Um, I know you're trying to make a play, but um, got to throw that ball away, especially if he wants to make that next step to possibly play on Sundays. Uh, you don't want to take those hits in the NFL. So third and goal from the sixth. Story looking at throw, looking for Simon. He makes the catch, but runs out of bounds inside the five. Wow, that was a heck of a throw there. Off balance in the rain. <laughs> wow, that's a good throw. Decision time for Tyson Helton. Looks like he is sending the field goal unit out on the team, as this is essentially an extra point. Weird angled extra point. Yeah, really sharp angle. The ball is placed on the left hash mark. I'd be looking for maybe fake here. Bold prediction here, but I'm, I'm, if I'm coaching, I'm, I'm running a little fake. Well, Corey Munson is the field goal kicker. He's a freshman. He's 13 out of 21 this season. Haggerty, the punter, he's the holder. That's a clean operation as the kick is up and the kick is good. So we have ourselves a tie ball game with a minute 13 in the first quarter. Western Kentucky on their second drive of the day are able to go 11 plays, 40 yards and five minutes and 37 seconds on a 21 yard field goal attempt by the freshman kicker Munson. And a nice drive there, Brandon, by the Hilltoppers to tie it at three. It is, like you said, you know, 40 yards, five minutes and 37 seconds without huddling. That's pretty absurd. 11 plays, 40 yards. 
Um, that's really meticulous. That's very, that's pay attention to the detail. That's those guys on the offensive line, understanding what the defense is going to do. But great drive, uh, good mix of run and pass, good mix of a lot of quarterback runs. Um, but really good drive. Got points, tied this game up, and we'll see what middle has for an answer. Well, Corey Munson will kick it deep here for Western Kentucky as Ty Lee and Jaron Pierce are back for Middle Tennessee. Tied at three in the 69th meeting all time between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. 100 miles of hate, the oldest and most played rivalry in Conference USA. Middle Tennessee leads the all time series 35 to 32. There's been one tie as that goes over the head of Ty Lee in the end zone for a touchback. Well, last time, Brandon, uh, this Blue Raider offense had the football, and they had the ball on their own one-yard line, and they do three consecutive incompletions. Yeah, I think they're going to throw it again here. <laughs> Looks like, um, I, I, in my opinion, I think they're going to throw it often and uh, very, very fluently because just because of the fact that most of their pass plays, talking to the coaches this week, most of their pass plays turn into quarterback runs, maybe one, two read by O'Hara uh, to kind of protect him, and then he runs. So uh, I, I do think there's going to be a lot more at least, at least design throws that might turn into runs. That was a two-yard run for O'Hara, trying to make some history today, trying to pick up 1,000 yards on the ground. He's inching closer to that. Last time that uh, Middle Tennessee had a player do that, it was Dwight Dasher, did it a decade ago in 2009. Scans the field, he's got Pierce, and Pierce with the catch and stumbles across the 30. They'll spot him at the 33 to bring up third and short. He talking to Tony Franklin this week, he talked about how O'Hara does a great job of getting to his third progression. As you saw that play develop from the box up here, he, he looked at one, he looked at two, reset his feet, that's the key, resets his feet and throws a, a little number three route on a curl route backside. Uh, great development throughout the year for O'Hara. O'Hara over the middle again looking for Pierce and he short hops and Pierce looking for the flag. That stops the clock with seven seconds. They're gonna throw it. <laughs> like I said, I think they're trying to develop this young quarterback Make sure he's disciplined and going through his reads, but he's done a good job so far in this game. Uh, not having happy feet. Looks like Tony Franklin right now is kind of giving him an earful on that sideline for not going through his reads right now, but he's done a good job. I, I've been very impressed with him. Uh, it's not there, he, he runs it, tucks it himself. He's a guy that can make guys miss, so um, great defense there, but um, again, field position will be, will be key. Hilltoppers offense coming back on the field and a sudden change again. Second punt in this first quarter for the Blue Raiders. Roger Cray signals for a fair catch, and it hits him, and the Blue Raiders recover it at the 36. Wow. Well, Roger Cray signaled fair catch, and then he couldn't make up his mind, do I want to catch it or get out of the way, and it just hit him. I know. Oh, no. You call for fair catch, you better, call, you better catch that thing. So Middle Tennessee catches a break and they'll try to take advantage when we come back as the first quarter comes to a conclusion, tied at three. Start of the second quarter. A lot of fireworks already between these two teams in the 69th meeting all time between Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. So after the punt, which is the first turnover of the day. Middle Tennessee has it. First and 10 from the Western Kentucky 37. O'Hara and company back out on the field and he will keep it off the right side with room and he gets tripped up as he stumbles inside the 25, picks up a, a gain of 13. Just a glimpse of his athletic ability right there. He holds that zone read so long that it just, it makes the defense declare uh, great job, man. That guy can make a guy miss. I'm very impressed with O'Hara so far. Yeah, what a bright future he has for the Blue Raiders. Here's Mobley up the middle. He carves his way ahead inside the 20 where he stopped three yards shy of the line to gain. 
And right now the Blue Raiders are able to run the football. 60 yards on the ground already. This is a Middle Tennessee team coming off of a home win against Old Dominion. Was able to cruise past Old Dominion. Trying to keep the momentum rolling in the end zone. He's got his receiver out there and it's called for a touchdown. What a pitcher perfect throw from O'Hara. Wow, picture perfect. That was, <laughs> that was about as good as you can get it. O'Hara gets an earful from Tony Frank on the last series. They get a quick turnaround and he throw, drops a dime on the next drive. I mean, first pass, pass attempt from getting a, a, a butt chewing on the sideline. Wow, that is uh, very impressive, very mature as a young kid. Man, that's hard to do. Uh, very impressed with O'Hara so far in this game. 17-yard touchdown pass O'Hara to Isaiah Upton gives Middle Tennessee the lead back as the extra point. It's up and it's good. Well, that didn't take long. Not kidding. Blue Raiders cash in after getting the fumble recovery, and they punch one in just seconds later. 14.02 to play in the second quarter. Middle Tennessee in front of Western Kentucky, 10-3. Ten three yard score. Middle Tennessee leads West Kentucky, uh -oh. and it's off the face mask of Sloan. He picks it up at the 15 and will be dropped there. And right now, Brandon's special teams are an adventure for the Hilltoppers. Special teams and the elements. Uh, those are two keys to the game. They're just protecting the ball. And uh, Sloan right there just kind of looked like he looked like he was wanting to go before he caught it. Like I was talking about as a quarterback, same thing in special teams. You got you to see the ball in these elements and make sure you look in every single catch. So Middle Tennessee coming off that touchdown pass, 17-yard uh, strike. O'Hara to Upton, just the sixth catch of the season for Isaiah Upton in his first touchdown. But they were, we were told before the game they were going to play a lot of Young guys with that new red shirt rule. It's a high snap to Story. He's going to sling it to Lucky Jackson, and he's trying to find some room. And Brooks is there again for Middle Tennessee with a stop. Trivia question for the viewers. I, I talked about it earlier in the in the broadcast. Bad snaps on these RPOs. Again, we got an RPO in that last play. Ty Story. Uh, back in the red zone a couple drives ago, gets a bad snap, and he just hands the ball off. Again, another bad little bit of race snap. A young quarterback just give those balls in the RPO. The timing comes off of that play, and the loss of one on an RPO when you don't even have to throw it. Story finds Lucky Jackson again, and Jackson drops at the 21 to bring up third and short. So Lucky Jackson, most catches in Conference USA this season. He did have a touchdown last year in this game against Middle Tennessee. Both of these head coaches, no strangers to this rivalry. We had a good visit with Coach Stockstill earlier this week, and he's been doing this long enough. He kind of gets all the games mixed up in this rivalry over the years. Not kidding. He said he can remember past two years. Other than that, he's got to actually look down and see the year and the score to remember what happened. Story, nothing on the left, rolls out to the right, and he's got Lucky Jackson for a first down. What a play by Ty Story. Ty Story one up O'Hara on the last drive. He goes to his third read, gets a little bit of, buys a little time with his legs, and throws an accurate ball on the run. That is the key, accuracy on the run. If you can do that, especially in these elements, you can get run out to catch. It's a that gain of 19 yards, and Lucky Jackson already five catches in this first half. Do you think they're on a pretty good page, these those two, what you would say? I'd say so. Nice duo. Those two are. There's Pearson in motion and Story being pressured and Story will get dropped all the way back at the 33. And this is a Middle Tennessee team. Not a lot of sacks. Fewest in Conference USA coming into the game today. That's a big one there for the Blue Raiders. Middle actually, actually busted coverage. Uh, and Quinn Jernigan didn't want to get his head around. He's got to get your head around. You're open, you see grass, get your head around, let the quarterback find you. Ty Story was ready to throw in the ball, but his head wasn't turned around and caused a sack. It's a loss of six. Here's movement at the line of scrimmage, and this play will be blown dead. This will be a five-yard penalty against Western Kentucky. That's something that the Hilltoppers do not really do a lot 
Visiting with Brian Ellis, the offensive oh, so coordinator oh, oh, for the Hilltoppers. There have been four oh, games oh, this oh, year where Western Kentucky has down. not had a penalty on offense. Oh, that's impressive. And there's the first one of the day on offense for West Kentucky, first penalty overall between either of these teams. That doesn't really surprise me because you you go to a Western Kentucky practice, Brian Ellis is running around with a chicken with his head cut off, just emphasizing, don't beat yourself. So after the penalty, it's second and 21. Ball is marked back to the 29. Play action, a quick hitter to Jackson, and Jackson works his way up to the 35. So he picks up seven to make it somewhat third down and manageable here for West Kentucky. View into the quarterback's mind. Take care of the football. Number one, long, long distance. Your, a, a kick is what you need to do here, either a punt, an extra point, a field goal. End every drive with a kick. So as a quarterback, third and extra long, as a play caller, knowing that your quarterback uh, just made a couple, made a boo-boo in the first drive, um, you gotta make sure you protect him by maybe throwing a screen pass, maybe running the ball, maybe just doing something to cut the field down in half. Story being chased from behind and Story gets tripped up. So nine sacks coming in in the game for Middle Tennessee. They got two on this drive alone. That time it is DQ Thomas, the junior from Oxford, Mississippi. They are playing with energy, Middle Tennessee is. That's a full pass protection, seven man in protection, two guys in a route, and they still get to the quarterback. That is impressive. Those are guys playing uh, with a purpose on the defensive side of the ball. Second punts of the afternoon for Haggerty. 25 years old, he's an Australian. High snap, Blue Raiders again come after it. Haggerty booms it away. Fair catch called by Ty Lee. At the 30, he got hit. And Middle Tennessee calling for a flag. Penalty marker is not down, as this will take us to 9.38 to play in the second quarter. Middle Tennessee with the ball and the momentum up by a touchdown against Western Kentucky. And 100 miles of hate, 69th meeting all time between the two schools. 9.38, second quarter, Middle Tennessee in front 10 to three over Western Kentucky. Third drive of the game coming up here for the Blue Raiders and Brandon Sokol, Asher O'Hara. Uh, only completed three passes so far, but he's doing a little bit of everything. Touchdown pass, 44 yards rushing on the ground. So far, this offense has been able to handle all the weather. They have, they've, they've, they've been able to protect the ball and the quarterback's doing a great job of reading his keys and making the plays when they present themselves so far in this game. I'm interested to see what Clayton White and the defensive staff have uh, as for his adjustments. They do a pretty good job of adjusting uh, mid-game. So I'm excited to see what, the, what they got for Ash O'Hara. Yeah, this Hilltopper defense consistently top two in every category in Conference USA. It's UAB and Western Kentucky. Here's Mobley on the ground and Mobley powers his way Mobley up to the 33. Mobley so far today, five carries for 16 yards on the ground. Well, Middle Tennessee has been in familiar situations weather-wise in games this season. This is the third time this season they have played in conditions like this. How much of a benefit, if any, do you think this favors the Blue Raiders? I think that's the reason why they're up 10 to three right now. I think they've, they've handled the elements very well. They've coached them, it's been echoed, and they've actually had to be able to prepare for that. Tons of room for O'Hare as he scoots out of bounds in Hilltopper territory, pursued by Devin Key, but right now, everything on the way of the Blue Raiders. You're not kidding. I have a question for you, Graham. I mean, does this look like Jared Goff's offense from Cal? I mean, this is no. <laughs> this is Im very impressive by Tony Franklin. He has done a great job of adjusting to his players and adjusting his offense to their strengths. He's, he is impressive. That's what good coaches do, right? Figure Amen. out what type of personnel they have and put them in their strengths. And, and you touch on a Jared Goff, number one pick in the draft. He threw it around like crazy, setting all kinds of Pac-12 records just a few years ago. O'Hara will run it again, and again with room off the right side, where he stopped inside the 40 to bring up second and short. It's, it's interesting. I talked to Tony Franklin we did this week, and he, I asked him about 
how do you how do you adjust your offenses to your players? And he said it's it's pretty simple. He says he he said the same terminology that Jared used at Cal. You know, uh, Asher knows here at, at, at Middle Tennessee. He starts it with a um, he, he puts in the, the the standard playbook, and then he adjusts from there. Sees their uh, their weaknesses, covers their weaknesses, and you know uh, portrays and extrudes all their strengths. Here's Mobley this time. The Hilltopper is ready for it. Lina picked up one. Third down coming up here for the Blue Raiders. And on third down today, two out of five is Middle Tennessee. If you're a, if you're a betting man, would you say maybe uh, Asher O'Hara quarterback keep here on third and two? I, I, if I'm a gambling man, I'm, I'm putting my money on that. Well, they kind of spread it out, don't they, with the four wide receivers. Mobley, the back in the backfield. They're going to hat for a hat for a quarterback run. Here is the quarterback run, and the same result for O'Hara. Darts his way to the 31, and the drive continues for Middle Tennessee. Good design there, a little quarterback power. They got an extra guy, so usually my, and my, my slow brain count, I run a 5-2-2 as a quarterback. Uh, have Do not have any of Asher's abilities athletically. The good Lord didn't bless me with that, but my count is five. His count is six with these quarterback runs. You get an extra guy to block. Here's McDonald off the right side. Gets greeted in the hole by Devin Key. Well, you did say uh, earlier before the game started that when you were playing at West Kentucky, you played in a monsoon against LSU, and he threw it, what, 60 times against the LSU Tigers? Yeah, we threw it 66 times against the LSU Tigers in a, in a career high in cleat changes in that game. I think I had three. <laughs> How sore were you the next day? Oh, my goodness, so sore. O'Hare wants oh. to go up top, 101 coverage, and it's broken up at the last second by Trey Meadows. That is a fantastic defensive play there. Great ball. I mean, the quarterback couldn't have put it any, any better. Trey Meadows just makes a great play by seeing the receiver throw his hands up. As soon as the receiver throws his hands up, he puts his hand right in the middle of it. Great individual play, one-on-one -on, -one on an island out there in man coverage. That was Pierce. Pierce with only one catch so far today. On third and eight. Main coverage. Who does O'Hara go to here? His top target, Ty Lee. You gotta be able to spy him. Yeah. Lee hasn't even been targeted yet for We're the coming. Raiders. It's a bad snap, and O'Hara is able to locate it, and he's being swarmed and will finally be dropped all the way back at the 35. Oh, that could have been a disaster but O'Hara was able to pounce on top of the football before Jawan Jones was able to stop him. Jeez, I'm up in the booth thinking just jump on it. O'Hara picks it up and makes like six guys miss before he goes down. That's just the difference in athleticism between him and I, that's for sure. So another punt coming up here for Middle Tennessee. Did ask Coach Stockstill about the range uh, in his field goal kicker, said he's comfortable about 50 max for Cruz Holtz, but instead this time with the lead in these conditions, he's going to punt it, and what a job by Kyle Ulbrich to pin the Hilltoppers deep inside the five. So Coach Stock still having all the right moves in this first half. His squad up 10-3. to three. Hilltoppers with the football when we come back inside their own five-yard line. Five oh nine, second quarter. Middle Tennessee leads Western Kentucky ten to three. As you see, the Blue Raiders marching band made the short trip over to Bowling Green, fighting the elements as well. Everybody's fighting the elements. We're included in that. So here comes the Hilltopper offense, and Brandon so far just ninety nine yards of total offense so far for West Kentucky. What are your impressions so far in this first half? I think you stick to the game plan. I really do. I think the elements are going to adjust those numbers just a little bit because you got to take care of the ball. Maybe not be able to take too many shots down the field, but I think Ty Story's in rhythm. You keep him in rhythm by completing the ball as you can and, and hold on to that ball. Turnovers are the, just the will kill you right now. Here's the sixth carry of the day for Gage Walker, and it'll be a big one down the sideline. Can they get to him? Pushed him out of around midfield. Longest play of the day 
for Western Kentucky as that is a gain of 47. Previous two times they ran that outside zone, one back power, uh, pull or pull, pin and pull play, uh, we like to call it. Ty Story kept it on the read. This time he gives it to Gage Walker, huge lane, shows his speed and does a great job uh, getting up the field as fit quickly as he can reading his blocks. That was Brooks with the touchdown saving stop for Middle Tennessee. Brooks is having himself a day the linebacker from Atlanta, Georgia. First and 10 from the Blue Raider 49. They give it back to Walker. Walker with blockers out in front is stopped inside the 30. That one good for a gain of 22. You hit it, same exact play. Ty Story does a good job of kind of getting hands and reading that outside defender. He's just reading that defensive end. If he crashes to Ty, Ty Story, he gives the ball to Gage Walker on the outside. So uh, great job by Ty Story reading it. Great call, running away from the blitz. That's a great call, uh, young coordinators. Running away, run that ball away from that blitz. Seven carries, 92 yards for Walker in this first half. This time, Ty Story keeps it, and Story, he's in the clear. Takes it all the way in. A 27-yard touchdown run for Ty Story. His longest run of the season, and his seventh rushing touchdown this year. It looks like the quarterback runs are in full effect in this game. Great read by Ty Story again. Now he, that one he didn't really have to read because it's a design quarterback run. Great chess game by offensive coordinator Brian Ellis. He gives the ball to Gage Walker, gives the ball to Gage Walker. Second, third play down, fakes it to Gage. Ty Story goes 27 yards, touchdown Hilltoppers. So prior to that drive, Brandon, West Kentucky 99 yards of total offense. That drive alone, three plays, 96 yards, and it took a minute 25. That is impressive. They didn't get the goal of the one to hold the ball as long as they possibly can, but they'll take points, that's for sure. Extra points is good by Munson. Tied at 10 with 344 left in the first half. And what a ball game this has been. Both teams have had the momentum as we'll keep it here. Both teams got to be impressed with the way that each of these squads have been able to handle uh, the elements here. Both teams playing well. They are. They're playing well, and it just got even more excited with a 96-yard drive. Defensive side of the ball, uh, got to make some adjustments, but momentum will be key. Seeing this drive, see the first couple plays of this drive, got to get positive plays of the first few, few plays uh, of this drive uh, from uh, Asher O'Hara. But great run here, first run, uh, just a little pin and pull play, reading the defensive end. He doesn't go out there enough to, to for Ty Story to, not, to keep the ball. Same play again, pin and pull. Uh, back to the boundary this time, running away from the blitz. The blitz was coming the opposite way. I was calling it from the booth. Pretty easy to see. They did a little check with me, and then to top it off, Ty Story does a good job of just using his athletic ability, his God-given athletic ability, uh, to just making guys miss. They set up a wall, that old, old head offensive line this year. Timeout call on the field. We will keep it here with 344 to play in this first half, Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee deadlocked at 10 apiece. So Brandon, you're obviously no stranger to this rivalry. What do you remember most about playing Middle Tennessee? It's funny, you look back at your career when you're an old man like myself, and you know you're old when you start thinking about An old the man old... that's not 30 years old yet. Yeah, well, when you start <laughs> thinking about your old times as a player, you feel a little bit older than you are. But we lost in 2014 in, in triple overtime, and I took the biggest hit I've ever taken in my career ever. Really? Um, in that game, yeah. I think it was the only time Forrest Lamp, our left tackle, had given up a sack. And we ran like a half roll to the right, stop, throw the ball back left, and I didn't. I turned right when I turned. That guy hit me so hard. I don't even know. I, I don't know how I continued the game to be honest with you. Back nowadays, you're probably been in concussion protocol and you have to go through all these tests. But back in my old day, you know what I mean? There, Graham, you didn't have to do all that fun stuff. There was a stretch where this game was a shootout, as a fair catch called by Ty Lee at his own 12. So first and 10 coming up for the Blue Raiders from their own 25. But there was a stretch there. Games went into double, triple overtime, and that was the norm it in was. this series. Yeah, I agree. And this is a its a really cool rivalry, and it's cool to see as an ex-player the rivalry stay attached. You know, sometimes it gets lost from senior classes to senior classes, but 
from when I was a freshman at Western Kentucky, uh, the, the middle rivalry was just one thing that was very consistent. We didn't have a lot of consistency, but that middle rivalry was one of those. Oh, here looking at Tho, going up top again. He's got his target. This is Mobley. Mobley tackled from behind inside the 25. That's the longest play of the day. A gain of 51 for Middle Tennessee. That's the same play they ran to open up the drive, just a different person running it. Uh, great job by O'Hara. Just that's what it is. It's just the the run game is setting up the pass. They've ran the ball so well. They've been successful on first and second down running the ball, especially with these quarterback runs. They fooled them on that one with the zone coverage. They just busted right down the middle. Mobley had six catches the entire season. He's got two for 82 yards in this first half for the Blue Raiders. That's impressive. So three minute mark in the second quarter. Blue Raiders marching. Near side, this is Ali, and Ali is tackled inside the 15. They'll spot him down at the 13, and now Middle Tennessee is in the red zone once again. And remember, they have scored on their last 22 trips in the wow. red zone. That is impressive. That's just strictly coaching right there, just emphasis on red zone offense. Uh, that is impressive. They had a little struggles earlier, and they've done a good job of, of mending the ship. O'Hara stopped from behind by D'Angelo Malone. His second tackle of the day. This will bring up third and two. You think this will be four down territory? You think Middle Tennessee will kick a field goal, but you know they don't want to even think about a field goal here with the third and two coming up. No, they got to pick it up, I think, one first on this play. We're looking like quarterback draw, quarterback run. If I'm offense coordinator, I know everybody in the building thinking quarterback run, so I'm throwing a play action pass. Uh, but second, if it is, they don't get it. Unfortunately, I think you have a you have ability to go for it on fourth down. I think they will. They give it to McDonald, and McDonald is stonewalled at the line of scrimmage. Got to go. Bailey, one of the first ones to him. And now decision time for Rick Stockstill. Offense is staying on the field, and now Tyson Helton calls a timeout for West Kentucky, his second. We'll keep it here with a minute 30 left in the first half. And right now it is fourth and two, they will call it, from the 13 of Western Kentucky. And this is a situation you touched on it earlier. Middle Tennessee sitting at four wins. Why not just go for it? On the road, rivalry game, playing well in the first half. Just be aggressive and go for it. Agreed. And if you're on the opposite side of the ball, you got to expect some trickery, expect the unexpected, just because they're playing with Nothing to lose right now, but I like the aggressive call. I like the timeout by Coach Helton, to be honest with you. This is a this is a very big play in this first half. In my opinion, I think it's the biggest play of the first half just from a momentum standpoint. I know you, some people don't believe in it, but as a player, it's, it's pretty, uh, you can taste when the momentum is on your side. You know when it is, you can feel it. And uh, for momentum purposes, I think this is a, a big one. Uh, and this is the biggest, biggest possession, biggest play of the first half, in my opinion. So the Blue Raiders are going for it. They'll actually call it fourth and one. Middle Tennessee this season, six for 13 on fourth down. McDonald is in the backfield. O'Hara with 83 yards on the ground. He sends McDonald in motion. He's going to take off straight ahead. He's got room off the right side. O'Hara at the five. Lunches for the pile line. Is he in? He is out around the three. What an unbelievable play by Asher O'Hara to put the Blue Raiders on the doorstep. I mean, this kid's got some grit. You want to talk about a kid that's got a little grit. Uh, and if I'm being critical and I, I'm going to be because that's my job. Young quarterbacks, don't reach for that front pylon. Don't if you have to reach for that front pylon, don't don't do it. Especially if, unless it's fourth down or it's a two point conversion or it's fourth and one where defense is going to get their get the possession back. Because if you lose that ball reaching it out for a pylon, that's a that's a touchback going the other way and you lose points. First and goal from the two. 
O'Hare keeps it and gets tripped up, maybe lost a yard in the process to bring up second and goal with the rain pouring down and with that last run, by the way, for O'Hara. Now over 1,000 yards on the season. He is the second Middle Tennessee quarterback to do it. He and Dwight Dasher, the only two in school history. He's electric. Second and goal from the three. Mobley. The bigger back is now in the backfield here for Middle Tennessee. The Raiders do have two timeouts. Looking to throw. A lob in the end zone looking for Lee, and it's incomplete with Trey Meadows on the coverage. I thought they were going to call that. They're calling this thing pretty clean so far. Pass interference, I thought he got there just a tad early. That's the first target for Ty Lee, by the way. Ty Lee has the longest active streak in the country. He has one catch in 51 consecutive games. Wow. So third and goal from the three. This is where O'Hare can be so dangerous. Zero. Cover zero. Play clock at two. O'Hara lob in the end zone in a crowd. It's deflected and it's incomplete. That was a dangerous pass. Really tried to fit that one in to Ali. Line, lined up in zero there. Check the checker. Uh, Clayton White, he checks the checker, runs a zone coverage. Manny outside with three funnel players to funnel everything inside. That's why there was so much traffic in there for O'Hara when he threw that ball. Cruz Holtz. One for one today, he's been good from 26. This is essentially an extra point. Kind of a low snap, the kick is up and it is good. So with 30 seconds remaining in the first half, Middle Tennessee retakes the lead 13 to 10 over Western Kentucky. Kind of like the fights and the grit from the Blue Raiders going on the road. In the elements, they played well. They have. They've done a good job of executing the game plan. I think the game plan's been good. They've taken their shots, and they've they've capitalized on those shots up the field in the pass game. Asher's done a great job of extending plays and doing what he does by making guys miss and making spy players miss. But you have to be uh, very pleased with your team's effort if you're Rick Stockdale right now. Uh, going into half, 30 seconds into the half, uh, up in this game when you're you know, double-digit underdogs. What do you think the uh, strategy here for Tyson Helton, Western Kentucky, is be aggressive? I, it'll be based upon their first play. If they get a positive play of, my, my rule of thumb would be six or plus more yards in, on first down, I, I, that, that, that engages go, or first down even, it engages go with 30 seconds left. Uh, but if it's, a, if it's a negative play, an under five yard play, um, I think you pack it in, run the ball out, take a knee and get to half. Fair catch made by Sloan. And this will put Western Kentucky first and 10 from their own 25. So here's what you're talking about. How yep. successful is this first play for the Hilltoppers? And me, I overanalyzed everything, but that, that fair catch was caught before that kicker even caught, they even kicked the ball. So that to me says he was told uh, not to give up any time trying to run this thing back that we're going to try to go. But uh, that's just me probably overanalyzing things up here in this booth. Hilltoppers do have one timeout to work with. And what has been a very entertaining first half. They're going. So Ty Story passing today's eight for 10 for 70 yards. He also has 33 yards rushing and a touchdown. Zone coverage. It's a bluff. He will keep it. And Story up the middle. Stutters his way to the 34 and a timeout is taken by Tyson Helton. There you go, eight yards. So 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Now obviously must go through the air here. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Try to get a chunk play, maybe take a shot here, second and short. But the defense knows that as well. So as your quarterback, you got to think touchdown, big shot there. Don't force the ball. We got 23 seconds left. If you are going to force the ball, it's got to be mine 
our player gets it or nobody gets it. Um, make make our players make a play with the ball. And if it's not there, if it's not wide open, check the ball down and, and get a first down, get the clock stopped, and try to get the ball, uh, the ball out of bounds. I think right now as an offensive coordinator, they're thinking, how can we get a, a play to the sideline? Maybe cut the field in half with the quarterback. What that means is get him on the run, do a high-low read to the boundary or, or something that um, – Something that's a little bit unorthodox, and maybe they can get a, a, a cheap timeout out of it by getting out of bounds. Story trying to set up the screen to Walker. He does have some blockers out front. First down across the 40, so this will momentarily stop the clock with 16 seconds. Screen play, got to get out of bounds, Gage. That's just the inexperience of being a running back in a two-minute offense. They don't run it much in practice, maybe once a week. And um, who knows if he's getting reps and doing it. So um, got to get out of bounds. If you're outside the numbers, it's, it's, it's impeccable that you get out of bounds. It's, it's critical to the team that you get out of bounds and save a timeout. Clock remains stopped at 16. Wide open, far side of the field, catching it and running out of bounds. It's Lucky Jackson. He's had a big first half. That's a sixth catch. Like I talked about earlier, shot play, double move. Not there right on time, not there. Ty, Ty Story has a clock in his mind that says, this ain't going to work. Check, check the ball down, get you eight, stay up above the chains, and second, get you a shot at this play. You know, after the 50-yard line, past, once you get past the 50, you start taking thinking about shots. Uh, right now, I'm not thinking shots, thinking about staying ahead of the chains and, and, and um, getting completions and getting out of bounds. Empty backfield here for Ty's story. Trying to set one up in a crowd, trying to move his way through traffic. It's Pearson, and Pearson with a first down. Stopped at the 35. This will stop the clock with three seconds. So no, now, time, no timeouts for the Hilltoppers. Got to clock this. Yeah, Ty's story. Looks like he's just going to try to snap it here with the three seconds. And we have a whistle, and this play is live. Uh -oh. So Ty's story pointing down the field and launches in the end zone. He's got Pearson, and it's over his head, incomplete. There was a little bit of confusion as West Kentucky did not elect to spike it to stop the clock. They wanted to go for it, and the official blew his whistle, but the whistle was uh, to get the clock rolling, and they snapped the football, and everybody just thought that a penalty or a timeout was called. Holy cow, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, that was bizarre. As you see, Tyson Helton having a conversation with the official, but an entertaining first half comes to a conclusion that sees Middle Tennessee leading Western Kentucky 13 to 10 at the break. Halftime score, Middle Tennessee leads Western Kentucky 13 to 10 in an entertaining first half as uh, we'll step aside. And when we come back, you will have a uh, nice feature with Western Kentucky volleyball head coach Travis Hudson, who is in his 25th season as the head coach for the Hilltoppers. Halftime score, Middle Tennessee leads Western Kentucky 13 to 10. Here's a nice uh, video package of the West Kentucky Volleyball head coach, Travis Hudson, who is celebrating his 25th season as a head coach for the Hilltoppers. And what a job he's done over the years as the head coach at WKU and the volleyball program. Well, volleyball was not on my radar. Uh, that's for sure. When I was young, I was a football basketball player in high school. and. I uh, thought that I, if I ended up in coaching, I would end up in one of those and uh, came to WKU as a student and uh, just kind of happened upon a volleyball game, um, you know, all going on on campus and met some people that played and started playing the sport and, um, you know, little by little fell in love with it and started grinding and, and you know, ended up as, as their manager in their gym, uh, in the volleyball gym. and. Um, you know, just day by day, week by week, learn more and more about the sport and have always believed that if you take the time to learn the X's and O's of a sport, um, you know, that if you can coach, you can coach anything. And uh, certainly I'm, I'm proof of that. 25 years in, I'm st I still crave learning new ways and, um, you know, doing things differently. And this has all happened 
a day at a time. Uh, it, it really has. I, I look back and I realize how long I've been here and, and all of the success that we've been able to have. And it was not part of the grand plan. The grand plan was just to wake up and, and give it everything I had that day and, you know, be humble and hungry and and want to continue to get better and um, you know all of a sudden you wake up 25 years later and some pretty special things have happened. Um, I made the same two promises to them that I make today. Uh, that has literally not changed in 25 years. I promise them that if they come here they're going to get a degree. Uh, we have a hundred percent graduation rate in my 25 years as a head coach. Um, and the other promise I make to them and I look at their parents and make to them is if your daughter comes here I'm going to care about her. Uh, she, I don't know if she'll be the next All-American. I don't know if she'll start next year. I don't know if she'll, you'll always be happy with my decisions as a coach, but I promise you every night when they lay their head down, they're gonna know that there's somebody in, at Western Kentucky that cares about it. That is the foundation of who I am and, and what our program's about. Western Kentucky. And Middle Tennessee at halftime. Blue Raiders lead the Hilltoppers 13 to 10. We'll step aside and when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the first half stats. Welcome back to Rainy Bowling Green, Kentucky, where our halftime score, Middle Tennessee leads West Kentucky 13 to 10. And Brandon Wood. An entertaining first half we had. Despite the elements, both teams were able to uh, put together a solid first half. What's your biggest takeaway after one half of play so far? I've just been surprised about how balanced both teams have been. I think that um, Astro O'Hara has done a great job of, O'Hara has been doing a great job of uh, making plays with his feet. And on the opposite side, Ty Story's done a good job of uh, controlling the game, managing the game, the lack of turnovers on both sides. Those are the two things that kind of pop out to me uh, from a, uh, a coaching perspective in the box and, and looking at uh, uh, the future of this game. Some of the first half highlights, and a big part of that is Asher O'Hara. And in the process, you see all these runs that he had in the first half. He becomes just the second quarterback ever in Middle Tennessee history to run for 1,000 yards or more in a single season. He, along with Dwight Dasher, who did it in 2009. There's the touchdown pass to Isaiah Upton, his first of the season. That was a 17-yard strike to give uh, Middle Tennessee the lead at that point, 10 to 3. And then the Hilltoppers got in on the action thanks to Gage Walker on a three-play drive that was 96 yards and took 90 seconds and it was two runs by Gage Walker capped off by the longest run of the career from Ty Story a 27 yard touchdown run his seventh of the season and that run was able to tie the game at 10 apiece at that point and then Middle Tennessee was able to kick a 20 yard field goal from Cruz Holt to give the Blue Raiders a 13 to 10 halftime lead over uh, Western Kentucky at the break. What do you think will be the biggest keys for each team in the second half? I think for Western, I think they do a good job of uh, on the defensive side of the ball of adjusting, of making adjustments at this time, at this halftime. Uh, when you're in there and you're trying to adjust to what the defense is, or the offense is doing, I think they do a pretty good job of that. And on the opposite side, Middle Tennessee's got to, uh, uh, you know, adjust to the adjuster and see how they can be a little bit more creative running the ball, throwing the ball a little bit down the field, taking their shots when they can, and connecting in those shots. Both teams have done a good job of, of connecting up on the big plays. Uh, how you're going to manage those big plays is going to be key to the second half. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see um, – what is in store and what this chess game of this matchup and this rivalry is in store in the second half. That's that's my personal opinion. And also a big um, thing that kind of jumps out as well. Only one turnover, and that was a muff punt by West Kentucky. Other than that, it's been a pretty clean game as well. It has, and that's shocking to me with this rain. It's been uh, pouring down. You really can't see that on TV as well, but it is in a couple shots of it. But it is pouring down rain, and I think that's going to be key in this second half as well, being able to 
uh, managing the turnovers, you know, making sure you do the little things, catching the ball, securing the ball, all those things that are talked about that are sometimes going one ear and out the next in practice during a, a game plan of week. Uh, but you can see that, that there's a little bit of a difference in the way that Middle's taking care of the ball and that one turnover, or the zero turnovers, and Western's taking care of the ball with their one turnover. And I think that's really essentially been the difference in this game has been the one turnover. So, so that's going to be a big time uh, adjustment for both teams, just being able to take care of the turnovers, take care of the ball, and making sure they run with a purpose in the second half. So Middle Tennessee with a three-point lead over West Kentucky at the half. When we return, we'll have the start of the third quarter, and the Hilltoppers will have the football when we come back to Houghton Smith Stadium. Welcome back as we get ready for the third quarter. Middle Tennessee holding on to a three-point lead. And, Brandon, when you look at the numbers stats-wise, both teams are pretty balanced. Uh, 218 yards of total offense for the Blue Raiders, 235 for West Kentucky. And it's been balanced as well on the ground and uh, passing today for each squad. Yeah, it has. And, and they've done a good job of uh, having a balance that keeps the defense on defenses uh, guessing of what you're going to do. If you kind of throw the ball every play like Washington State does and uh, you throw it every play, yeah, the, you can have success, but there's no element of surprise. And I think both teams have done a good job of running the ball and passing the ball. I think Middles probably uh, called more pass attempts than Western has, but their quarterbacks being so athletic and so uh, physically gifted, uh, making guys miss, he extends play, plays, and those passes turn into runs, with quarterback runs. So, um, very interesting, very cool dynamic of the game, but uh, they've done a really good job of mixing it up, both teams. So we're underway in the third quarter, and a fair catch signal by Sloan to make it first and 10 for West Kentucky from their own 25. So in the first half, Ty Story, 11 for 14 passing, 102 yards, no touchdowns. He does have nine carries for 41 yards, a touchdown on the ground. Gage Walker, seven carries for 92 yards. The leading receiver, Lucky Jackson, with six catches for 43 yards for the Hilltoppers. So Ty Story gets ready to go back to work. I think the most fascinating thing that Tyson Helton described him, he said he's pretty even kill, doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. As he hands it off to Gage Walker to begin the third quarter, Walker off the right side oh, across the 30. They'll mark him out at the 31, but Tyson Helton compared Ty Story to uh, Sam Darnold, who Tyson Helton coached at USC, maybe not physically wise, but he said the biggest thing, just the way that they handle, handle uh, themselves and really his mannerisms, compares him to Sam Darnold. That's a good person to be compared to. Heck yeah, it's a first round pick, top three pick in the draft. I would, I would want to be compared to that guy too. Gage Walker approaching 100 yards on the ground. He's got 98 yards today. As Story slings it, caught by Sloan, and he's tackled at the sticks immediately. This results in a first down, and that is the first catch of the day for Sloan. Off and soft coverage, one high zone coverage, cover three with a little blitz underneath. Outside stuff is there. Those, those corners get such a so often soft on the outside. The safeties have to respect when number two, the second receiver, runs vertical. They have to yeah, respect the vertical and gives gives Ty Story enough time to get that ball outside. Got Story him. trying to take a shot. Lucky Jackson wide open, streaks down the sideline, cuts it across. He's in the clear. Lucky Jackson takes it all the way to the house for a touchdown. A gain of 64 yards gives Western Kentucky their first lead of the day. Again, we talked about it earlier. Um, look, it felt like Brian Ellis and Tyson Helton were setting something up, and here it is, fake screen, fake bubble screen. Uh, defense uh, gets swarmed up, gets sucked up by the fake. Uh, Lucky Jackson wide open, carries one in for a big gain. It's his third touchdown reception of the season. He scored last year in this game against Middle Tennessee as the extra point. It's up and it's good. Well, that didn't take long. Three plays, 75 yards. It took a minute, 20. Hilltoppers lead the Blue Raiders 17-13.
Hilltoppers lead the Blue Raiders 17 to 13. And what a start to the second half for the Hilltoppers, Brandon. A great drive, a great mix up of plays, a great drive, just a nice double move on the outside. I thought um, it felt like that in the first half that Tyson Helton and Brian Ellis were, were setting something up. And uh, up to that avail, they hit on a big play, wide open Lucky Jackson down the sideline for 64. Fair catch by Ty Lee at the goal line. First and 10 on the way for the Blue Raiders from the 25. And another look at that touchdown pass. Here's fake fake screen. They've had had success in that two minute drive with those, those screens to Pearson. Set it up. Lucky Jackson runs a wheel route, makes somebody miss. That's just a good open field running right there and he does the rest. Lucky Jackson has had a uh, solid career, but what do you think has been the biggest difference this year for him as he leads the conference in receptions? I think it's the continuity. I mean, you bring back a offensive coordinator you had that had success. He knows the offense, knew it coming in. Um, so I think that that's been the biggest, uh -oh, biggest factor for Lucky Jackson and his growth. That time, O'Hara absolutely blown up in the backfield. Huge loss on the play. Hilltoppers were all over that one. Yeah, that's not how you want to start a half. Yeah, that's Jawan Jones, who's having himself a good game today. Richard Jr. from Sugar Hill, Georgia. That's a loss of six, makes it second and 16 for Middle Tennessee. O'Hara, deep drop, and he connects with Pierce. Picks up a good portion of those yards back. Jaron Pierce, junior from Los Angeles. On time throw there. I mean, that's as good as it gets. Five step drop, two hitch, bang. Puts the ball on him in a tight window. O'Hara does a good job getting those yards back. And now it's kind of third and manageable-ish, third and seven. Blue Raiders today, three out of nine on third down. O'Hara slings a dart. It's called for a first down across the 35. That time he drills one into Yusuf Ali. Just a sticks play. Uh, Hilltoppers bring a blitz there. Run a sticks play. What that means is they, the receivers turn around at the first down marker and they, they get exactly what they wanted first down level. Here's another positive gainer back to Ali, his second catch on this drive. So Asher O'Hara, he is now eight for 17 passing. He does have a touchdown pass over 130 yards through the air. And now looked like he wants to take a shot. He looks to the left. He's now got a lot of room, and he's going to take off. Picks up a block. He's in Hilltopper territory. Stays on his feet and then lunges forward to the 35. And there's another huge run on the ground for Asher O'Hara. Interesting. They went hard count there. Center determines when they go. When you go hard count, sometimes you say, let everybody just go deep if there's a, they, they feel that the defender is offsides. It was a free play. And uh, instead of throwing it deep, he ran it for a big gain. Kyle Bailey is down on the field. He was a Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week back in September. Was a safety the last two years. Got moved to linebacker this year. He was the one that was chasing O'Hara and will slowly be helped off the field. That was a 22-yard run, by the way, uh, for O'Hara, his longest run of the day. 15 carries, 108 yards now for O'Hara. And how good has he been this year, Brandon? He is, he's got five games this season with 200 yards passing and 50 yards rushing, which is second in the country behind Jalen Hurts of Oklahoma. He's done that nine times. Wow, that's impressive. And it's shown in this game. I mean, he makes so many plays with his feet that, you know, they're calling pass plays, but they're really turning into run plays. And it just, um, this kid is talented. I'm excited to see his future and see what he has uh, with this Tony Franklin offense in another year of the system next year. Here's Mobley plows his way up the middle for a gain of two. Mobley, his line today, seven carries for 20 yards. 
He's done his damage on uh, a couple of catches. He's got two catches for 82 yards today. A funky formation here. Got an offensive lineman down on the bottom of your screen as O'Hare will keep it and falls forward to the 31. But they had their left guard uh, lined up out wide. Gotta expect anything, man. They got nothing to lose. So um, honestly, I think Asher kind of misread that one there. Hard to read. I, I, I hard to critique him because I never had to do it deal with a lineman uh, on the sideline, eligible lineman on the sideline. So. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but it looked like he misread that, should have gave that ball, he ended up being in the same hole he would have gave it to. Steps up in the pocket and down he goes. He gets dropped all the way back to the 37. They brought the house on that one. Drops back, uh, Clayton Clayton White brings the house. Not enough to pick it up there. He's, he's gonna be hot there and uh, Asher didn't see it. That was Clay Davis, the Tennessee Tech transfer records his first sack of the season to make the Blue Raiders punt the football. Sloan is back deep around his own six. Fair catch called at the six yard line by Sloan with 9.25 to play in the third quarter. West Kentucky 17, Middle Tennessee 13. Hilltopper offense on the field when we come back. Well, last time the Hilltoppers had the football, they scored in three plays, and it took under two minutes. Four-point lead for West Kentucky. 69th meeting all time between the Blue Raiders and the Hilltoppers in a series that dates back to 1914 when Middle Tennessee won the first game, 47 to zero. Nice. Longest played series in Conference USA. Gage Walker is now going over 100 yards on the day with that carry, picks up six yards. Good play to get out of the, now you're not in any territory. So as an offense and you're backed up six, six yard line in, you're, you're, you're kind of a little bit antsy. That's a heck of a play by Gage Walker, just getting downhill off a big old offensive line, big experience offensive line, getting off the ball and uh, getting him out of harm's way. Now they got a clean pocket. It gives Ty Story a little bit of room to work with as this time he's going backwards. Blue Raiders all over. I don't know if Ty Story was able to pick up any positive yardage at all. Render, one of the first ones to him, the senior from Noonan, Georgia. Leads the team this year in sacks with three. Big play there. Hmm. Interesting. Third down. They're third and two. Um, in, in my opinion, I'm, I'm thinking in peaking man coverage. Middle likes to play man on third and real short. Um, would be surprised they dropped the zone, like they're matching the personnel. Um, but for me, man coverage is the key here. Third down, look for a play action pass. Two tight ends are in. It's, it is a uh, play action for Story. Throws a dart over the middle where it's called by Jernigan for a first down. Works his way up to the 28 was tackled on the play by Fuller. And for Jernigan, that's his second catch today. Man coverage you asked for, man coverage you get. Crossing route by Quinn Jernigan on the back side of the read. That's that's actually Ty Story's third, third read in the progression there. He gets to Quinn Jernigan. Um, luckily, he's in man coverage, gets some separation. He keeps it himself up the middle, zigs and zags his way through the traffic and gets spun around shy of the 35. It just feels like Ty Story in his first season at West Kentucky is just getting more and more comfortable with this offense. He is. Each and, each and every week, each and every pass attempt, each and every run attempt, it's just another rep in his repertoire. you got to understand this kid has not been there uh, learning this system for four years. He comes in as a grad transfer, and you can see the comfort in him. Uh, week in and week out as he gets better in this offense. Picked up five at a second and five. Well, he's from Arkansas, where he was the Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year, went undefeated twice, and throws it left. He's got a target and a sliding catch made by Pearson in midfield. 
Second catch of the day for Pearson. That one is good for a gain of 17. And again, just comfortable and in rhythm. Ty Story is. He looks like he's got full control of this offense, knows exactly where one, two, three read is going to be, and there's his first read popping wide open for him. Great job by Pearson Mick going down and grabbing a catch. Well, Ty Story had nine starts last year at Arkansas. Made the move uh -oh. to West Kentucky. Got Back to Ty Story down the sideline. He's got a tight end. Simon makes the catch all the way inside the 20. That's good for 31. And everything going the way of the Hilltoppers. They're not kidding. They put the pedal down. They haven't taken off the gas. The trick plays, like I said, it felt like Tyson Helton was setting things up in the first half. And now they're, they're hitting on everything. He actually had both of them wide open great play design by Brian Ellis Tyson Helton first and 10 from the 18 Ty story only three incompletions today he has been locked in and now finds Lucky Jackson another catch for Lucky Jackson that's number eight his big take continues eight catches over 100 yards see young receivers um, the, sh the shorter the distance it is from the quarterback to the receiver means less danger Lucky Jackson does a great job of catching the ball but when he catches the ball he's always moving towards the quarterback one it gives him a good line of target a, 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 a line of distance to, catch, to throw the ball in an alley, but two, it, it protects the quarterback, and that just gains in trust. That's why Ty Story goes his way so much, because he can trust him. Here's a slant looking for Jackson, and it's incomplete. So that's the fourth incompletion for Ty Story, and this brings up third and seven. Both teams have had success today in the red zone. Hilltoppers are one for one. Earlier in the first half, they went for it on fourth down and were able to convert. Hill Toppers have a four point lead, third and seven from the 15. As you see Ty Story. We'll just drop it off to Walker. Walker wiggles his way, stopped at the 13. Brooks again on the stop. Brooks has been everywhere defensively for the Blue Raiders today. He's got a team high six tackles. A little blitz there, cop. They um, try to check with me. Uh, great call, defensive coordinator, Middle Tennessee. Just calls. He does a good job of showing one side. Oh, we're, we're, we got overload on one side, not so fast, the snap of the ball. Actually, the Baltimore Ravens do an amazing job at this snap of the ball. They get back to the, the guy that's on the, in the, the guy that's down in the box to the boundary. He gets, shoots to the middle of the field. They bring the blitz from the opposite side. They fooled Ty, uh, Ty Story on that one. And Munson is off the mark on the field goal attempt. He made one for 21 earlier. This one is off the mark. And Middle Tennessee dodges a bullet, and the Blue Raiders will try to find some momentum on offense when we come back. 17-13 lead, West Kentucky in front. So Middle Tennessee with new life after the missed 31-yard field goal attempt from Corey Munson. His ninth miss of the season, and Asher O'Hare and company back on the field. Here's the first touch of the day for Ty Lee. It's a carry, and Lee runs out of bounds after a short pickup. And Brandon, that's somebody that the Blue Raiders desperately want to get involved. He has a team high 44 catches this year, and I touched on it earlier. He has at least one catch in 51 straight games. That's a school record and the longest streak in the NCAA. And I'm sure someone in the box in the halftime was telling we got to get Ty Lee the ball, so I wouldn't be so shocked if he gets the ball here early and often in this game. And uh -oh. it's intercepted, threw it over the head of Pierce, trying to set up the screen, and it ended up right in the hands of Roger Cray. Just an errant throw there. Yikes. That's one that Asher will love to have back, just his eighth interception of the season. Yeah, maybe a little bit of the elements playing in there, not being able to drive the ball down, but that's a screen ball. If you're going to make it miss a screen ball that's coming back to you, you got to miss it low or in his chest or lower. So uh, I like, I think you want to have that one back, but 
know, elements probably paid a little bit of factor in that one. But great play by defense. Good momentum shift by the Hilltoppers here coming up. So first turnover of the day against Middle Tennessee. And this drive will start at the 19 for Ty Story and company. That's a bad time to have your first turnover. It really is. So the Blue Raider defense was able to stand tall last time. Do they have another stop in them? Back on the ground to Gage Walker. Rumbles forward for a gain of four. Got to be impressed with the job that Gage Walker has done this season. He did play in every game last year, but he was a cornerback. This year made the transition to running back for the first time since high school. And what has he done? Run for over 1,000 yards. Yeah, that's impressive. I, I don't think I've ever heard of a story like that. Uh, but Gage has done a great job of, from what I've talked to the coaches about, he's done a great job of studying the game, studying the plans, and, and it's paid off for him here this year. He's got the most carries in the conference. Story looking at Thoe, gets rid of it quickly, and he finds his freshman tight end, Simon, for a small pickup. A shot play there. Coach Elton calls a little shot play. They forgot to, to block the defensive end. He's free on that play. He finds a little uh, motion to Adam to kind of stop him, stop to try to pause him for one second to run their shot. But Ty Story does a great job getting off read one, read two, checking the ball down. Third down, manageable. Um, Maybe two down territory with a missed field goal last possession. Well, Lucky Jackson has been the go-to target today. He's at the bottom of the screen. Pearson is in the slot. Story looks for Jackson, and it's way off the mark. Incomplete. So this will bring up fourth and six. And you just touched on it. Munson just moments ago missed a 31-yard field goal. And Tyson Helton. Not a long decision for him at all. He immediately sends out the field goal unit. I think if they would have gotten some positive yards out of there, I think it would have made it more, a little bit easier for Coach Elton to go for it. But since they, they were incomplete on third down, I think it's a good good choice just to kick the field goal, take the points, uh, especially when you get fooled by zero. That's never good as an offensive coordinator. Well, they just missed from 31. This is from 32. The snap is down. The kick is up. And this one is no good. He misses this one wide to the right. Wow. So Middle Tennessee again still hanging around with 2.29 to play in this third quarter. That is a phenomenal defensive job there. I mean, they did gain zero yards. He just pushed this thing. Just, I mean, it was by centimeters. Gosh, that stinks. So Asher O'Hara survives the interception. He does, no damage done, which is huge. That's great. That's playing team football. And he will run on first down for a gain of four. Asher O'Hara, sophomore from Rolling Meadows, Illinois. You just got the sense that he is going to be a problem for Conference USA defenses moving forward. That is true. And especially, I like to see how he bounces back from throwing an interception in the last series. For, so far, so good for the first down completion. But um, no, I, I'd like to see that. That's a maturity. That's that's called growth in this sport. When you're a young guy and you're playing, maybe a little earlier than you than coaches want you to play, you got to show steps to progress. And I think that he's done a good job. I think it would be good for his confidence to see him uh, capitalize. Uh, you know, on the you know on the sudden change and uh, momentum that's shifting in their direction. He keeps it and gets tackled for a no gain by Jawan. Sugar Hill, Georgia. By the way, on that first down catch, that was Jimmy Marshall, by the way. That was his first target and reception. That's somebody that the Blue Raiders want to get involved in the second half. Second and 10 here for Middle Tennessee. Mason to the boundary here. Three receivers to the boundary looking to push vertical. He dials up a deep ball. He's got Ty Lee with his first catch of the game. Puts it at the Inside the 40, so they're finally able to go vertical to Ty Lee. Big play. You can see it's a point of emphasis. Ty Lee's touched the ball twice now in the second half. Coming out of the game, I'm not sure why, but maybe it's a run play. But he's done a great job. I mean, he gets he gets separation and adjusts to the ball. Maybe not the best throw in the world, but hey, give your receivers a chance and they'll make a play, especially a player like that. 
That was good for 33. Back on the ground, try to move the pile is McDonald. He is down at the 34. That's good to see. There goes the, the streak is still alive, I think, now. Yeah, 52 games with at least one catch or more. That's incredible. School record and the longest active streak in the NCAA. Oh, this might be a little trick play here. I don't know, they're just letting it run out. Yeah. Under five seconds left in the quarter. We got a good one in the 69th meeting all time between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. Blue Raiders trying to do some damage. They got second and seven from the 34 when we come back as West Kentucky holding on to a 17-13 advantage. Big Reds having a good time today as we begin the fourth quarter. West Kentucky leads Middle Tennessee 17 to 13. A little trickery. Oh, here. Quarterback run to the left. Hilltoppers all over. That results in a loss of three. Yeah, they lined the lineman out. That's the second time they've done that. They've put the lineman out as a receiver. O'Hara just gimpies, gimps up. Hey, he took a little funky shot there. They took a, they put the lineman out there on the on, into the field and just ran a quarterback sweep. I thought they were gonna do a little bit something more trickery than that. Blue, Blue Raiders today are 4-4-11 on third down. Got third and nine here. Here okay. is a screen to Ty Lee. His second catch and Ty Lee darts his way. Is dropped at the 28 he is short of the line of game yeah they're playing offense off there I think Tony Franklin and myself saw the exact same thing corner bailed at the snap of the ball throw a screen out there they didn't got enough numbers Tyler Lee makes a great play getting nine just to make it a, a goable fourth down is what I'm gonna say on fourth and two O'Hare lunges ahead and from the spot Brandon he's got it this kid's incredible man you He's a talk, gamer, you, isn't he? You want to talk about grit? You want to talk about um, uh, intensity, man? I mean, he jumps over three guys here and just wills himself for a first down. I mean, that's you can't coach that. You're either born with that or you're not. And that kid, this kid's got it. Whatever the it factor is, uh, I truly believe this kid's got it. Very impressed. And a player down for uh, Western Kentucky. It is Carson Jordan is the player down on the field, a senior from Poplarville, Mississippi, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College transfer. Getting looked at, clock is stopped with 13.48 in the fourth quarter. A game that we've seen a little bit of everything, but this rivalry game is certainly not disappointed again this season. It, got, it, and it never does. It seems like uh, every year these games are close. Um, just just be through the rivalry in itself and just guys just get up a little bit more when you're playing a rival. I mean, especially it's the last game of the season. Uh, Middle's got a long off season coming up and Western's trying to get in, get into a slot themselves into a decent bowl. So a um, lot to play for still here. So um, as expected, this game's close like it always is. So first and 10. After the quarterback run on fourth down for O'Hara. O'Hara 11 for 21, 182 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Does have 108 yards on the ground. Looking to add on to that total and it stops after a gain of three. Time brought down by Damon Lowe. You just get the feeling this may be four down territory the entire way here for the Blue Raiders. Yeah, I think so, just because of the fact they got nothing to lose, you know, and especially uh, 30 in, I would say it's four down territory. They're trying to clean up the clock, it looks like, a little bit by slowing the pace down, giving their defense a little bit of a rest. Great coverage. O'Hare looks left, those left. He's got a target. It's caught. Is he inbounds? It is no signal yet. That's a touchdown. The officials are talking about it. Pierce is the one that made the reception. Still no decision. 
And it looks like they're going to put it inside the two. They're going to look at that. That's a touchdown. And you see Tyson Helton wants an explanation or at least an instant replay review. What a throw. So this play will be reviewed. It took forever for the officials to determine if it was a catch and then if he scored or if he was down inside the two. What a throw. Again, receivers, like, receivers, I think that's a touchdown. Yeah. Receivers, give us some room out there. That's a great throw. Would have been a better play by the receiver. Yes, it's, it's going to be a score here, I think. Uh, but again, give us a little room. You keep fading to the outside, outside those numbers. The room for error is so much less. If you push up on that DB and create more separation, that ball doesn't have to be perfect. The Ashton throws a perfect ball there. That's a that's a, a perfect dime, we like to call it. And he throws it at only where his receiver can make the play. That's a touchdown. But Oops. Brandon, it looks like a clean catch, left foot down, and his right foot kicked the pile line. It's, a touchdown. it's just going to depend if his left foot is in bounds or not. But it certainly appears that this will be a touchdown to Pearson. Rather to Pierce. And here's the call. After review, the receiver had possession of the ball and broke the plane of the goal line. Touchdown. Wow. What a throw and catch by Jared Pierce, his fourth touchdown catch of the season. What a throw. Man coverage on the board. Asher, half this game about playing quarterback is knowing when you can take your shots in your matchups. Right there is a perfect example, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Asher throws a perfect ball. See if it gets space. Touchdown, Raiders. We got a ball game. That was a 10-play, 80-yard drive that took four minutes and 46 seconds capped off by the 24-yard touchdown pass. O'Hara to Jaron Pierce. This is a crucial extra points. It's up and it's good. So it's a three point lead for Middle Tennessee with 12.43 to play in this fourth quarter. Blue Raiders hanging around, trying to make things very interesting in this rivalry game on the road at Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers look to respond when we come back. Think life is good on that Middle Tennessee sideline right now. Blue Raiders retake the lead 20 to 17 over the Hilltoppers. It's been a season that has been uh, adventurous for Coach Stockstill and his staff, especially injury wise. Over 30 injuries, which is remarkable as Sloan will take this one out and Sloan trying to find some real estate tripped up at the 23, but this was a game that Middle Tennessee, it would have been easy to just go through the motions and lay over going on the road in the pouring down rain, potentially not go into a bowl game this season, but the Blue Raiders, they don't care about any of that. They have been playing lights out today. They're playing for each other. They're playing for their head coach and they're playing for the, the seniors. And, and it's good to see. It's good to see that they're motivated. It's good to see that they're still competing. That's just a sign of a, of a well-coached team, in my my opinion. And uh, they've done that today. They've competed. And I don't think the Hilltoppers have helped them. I think they've actually kept them alive in this game. I think if they would have scored three or four times early in the game, I think they would have folded and gave up. But they've kept them in the game. And uh, you do that to a team, it makes it dangerous in the fourth quarter. Short gain for Gage Walker, but how big are those two missed field goals looming now? A missed 31-yard field goal and a missed 32-yard uh, field goal attempt. Back to back and off of a turnover uh, where you get zero yards from your offense and attempt a field goal. I mean, that's huge. Those are huge points that you can't get back. And so um, Hilltoppers have to, I really truly believe they got to get something going here in this drive. Dumps it down to Gage Walker, his third catch of the day. Wiggles his way up to the 26. Fooled him again. They thought pre-snap read 
told every had everything intentions of being man coverage here. Ty Story misreads it, does a good job of just getting to his check down and picking up four or five. Here's a pivotal third and six for West Kentucky. Hilltoppers just two for eight today on third down. Huge. Lucky Jackson has been the go to target. He's at the top of your screen. Story being pressured, trying to avoid it, and he does create some separation. Backpedals throws over the head of Sloan. And a big stop by the Middle Tennessee defense. After the touchdown to go ahead, the defense comes through with a three and out. Huge stop. I mean, you can't initiate anything better than that. That's a huge stop. Pearson, it looks like he had a little option route. They tried to stack him on the outside, uh, and they run an option route. Pearson actually guessed wrong and went inside. Should have broke outside. He breaks outside. He's got green grass. He breaks inside. Gets double covered. Ty Story's in some trouble. The protection doesn't hold up, man. It's great, great, great chess game here on the Middle Tennessee defensive coordinator. Third punt of the day for Haggerty. Ty Lee charging in. Will avoid it, and it will take a big West Kentucky roll. Inside the 20, it'll be down at the 17-yard line. That is a 57-yard punt by Haggerty to put Middle Tennessee deep in their own territory. So Ty Lee elected to have the football hit the turf, and it took a friendly hilltopper roll, and it costs the Blue Raiders some pivotal yardage there. So last time Middle Tennessee had it, they were able to pick up a huge touchdown pass from Asher O'Hara to Pierce for the go-ahead score. Blue Raider offense goes back to work. And it is Mobley sheds off one tackle, falls forward for a gain of two. Strong run. The Middle Tennessee doesn't really do a ton RPO-wise. Read pass option, one pass option. So I'm shocked by that. I thought. That would be kind of a staple of what they would run with a quarterback that can make those decisions. I, I think in the years coming, I guess maybe his junior or senior year, they might initiate that and open up this offense just a little bit more. Just from a, a young quarterback perspective, not having them look at too many things. And so um, from there going forward, I think that they have an opportunity to run a little bit more RPOs with this kid and make him make more decisions. There was a brief delay on the field, and that was because the linebacker, Malik Staples, the Louisville transfer, his helmet came off, and by rule, he will have to come off the field for one play. So second and nine for Asher O'Hara. Clayton's not checking the checker at all in this second half. He did it a little bit in the first. I think it caused a little confusion, but they're running exactly what they want to run against the defense they want to run here in North Tennessee. Gain of two, maybe three from Mobley to bring up a third and long. I don't really like the calls here, to be honest with you. Two run plays, uh, you got momentum on your side. I think you gotta, you know, I think you gotta go down the field, take some shots, let your quarterback either throw it deep or run it himself. Two run plays with a running back. I don't know about that. Now you're in third and seven. Uh, and that's, you're just kind of guessing at this point. Look like the Hilltoppers might be blitzing here. Man coverage, it looks like. Play clock is under five. O'Hara fake the pitch, trying to pick it up on the ground up the middle, and he will be awfully close, Brandon, from the spot. He's around the 27. He's got it. Another quarterback run on third down. I mean, I, mean, I want to know what the percentage is of quarterback runs on third down. It's got to be high. I mean. And on third and long, third too. And long. Backed up. Shocking play call there. I don't know that. I think they're going to measure this. What a game, though, for Asher O'Hare. Touched on it earlier. Today is the sixth time this season where he's thrown for over 200 yards and run for over 50. Jalen Hurts only has more at Oklahoma. Wow. That's not a bad guy to be compared to either. Or no, be up there in stats at all. That guy's. And they're running for a Heisman. And there it is, first down signal for the Blue Raiders. I think time starts being a little bit of a factor. The uh, Hilltoppers aren't really built. Yes, they've had a couple drives where they scored quick, but they're not really built to go fast. And so um, 
time is becoming a factor in this game. This game is as close as I thought it was going to be going in. Tyson Helton was expecting a game coming down to the wire. Here's a handoff. Hilltoppers all over it. No gain on first down. Haven't seen a lot of McDonald in this second half. That's only his fifth carry of the game. Another run. Remember, this is a Blue Raider offense. They had the um, worst time of possession in Conference USA. And they're trying to milk the clock here with this three-point lead. They've had the ball for two and a half more minutes today than Western Kentucky so far. Play action, O'Hare looking to take a shot down the field. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's incomplete. That was roughing in on the coverage for the Hilltoppers. He was a little bit missed time there. I think that was his first read. I think he saw it late. I've, done that. I've been a victim of that before. Just being late to go routes, got to be careful, uh, especially when a receiver gets pushed out of bounds that far. Man, you, you can't really you have no room to throw the ball on the outside. That was Tinley, the intended receiver, his first target today. So it's third and 10. Middle Tennessee four for 13 today on third down. Ty Lee's been the go-to receiver. He's at the bottom of the screen. Coming. Looks to Ty Lee, fake the screen and will take off up the middle. One just forward and it is stopped at the 34 to bring up fourth down. Another run. Um, I, I, he hasn't thrown the ball one time on that drive. Killed some clock, yeah he did, but I'm, I'm shocked that they didn't throw the ball a little bit more. I have a little trust in their sophomore quarterback. So the Hilltopper sniffed that one out from the start. I think it was supposed to be a screen here, just being a, well, here, just being an athlete, just comes up with a, gets something out of nothing there. Fifth punt of the game for Middle Tennessee. That's Sloan back deep to return the punt for Western Kentucky. Sloan has not returned a punt this season. And it's a fake to Mobley off the left side, and the Hilltoppers stop it. So Middle Tennessee from their own 34-yard line, fake a punt, and Western Kentucky is all over it. All, all over it is correct. Uh, again, you, get, you got nothing to lose, why not? You know, I thought that, that was a good call. Uh, unfortunately, Hilltoppers make a great play, and unfortunate for the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders, be giving the ball back in scary territory, up only up three. It looked like Mobley needed just one more block to pick up that first down. He did. He had a little bit on the edge, just one block away, like you said. He would have picked it up easily. Big possession here. Got to get points to the Hilltoppers. First and 10. The Thank ball's you. at the 36. Oh, and Story going deep. He's looking for Jernigan. Snatches it out of the air inside the five. Wow. What a throw. What a catch. That's a senior making. Senior making a. They needed the most one on one coverage outside. They bring a, 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 a cross blitz and one on one coverage. Just give your receiver a chance. Ty Story does a great job of doing that. And Jernigan makes a play. 33-yard gain, third catch of the day for Jernigan. First and goal from the three. There's Pearson in motion. Got him. Rolling out to the right. Story in the end zone, caught! Touchdown, Hilltoppers! Jernigan again. Senior to senior connection, one again. I thought he had Pearson right off the Right off the fake, I thought he had Pearson in the flat. And he, the, again, Ty Story extending the play, getting the number three on the progression. Uh, great play, senior to senior again. That's just Quinn Jernigan, Ty Story making a plays when they need him most, man. Get the Hilltoppers a lead here late in this game. His second touchdown catch of the season. You're right though, Simon was wide open. Wide open, I thought he was at the goal to, line. Yeah. And Story elects to find Jernigan in the back of the end zone as the extra point, it's up and it's good. So Western Kentucky was 7-14 left in the game. The Hilltoppers now lead 24-20 over Middle Tennessee.
So the Blue Raiders on a fake punt that fails. Two plays later, Hilltoppers punch one in and take the lead. Western Kentucky 24, Middle Tennessee 20. And Brandon, another look at that touchdown pass. Yeah, it looked like there was a little bit of miscommunication. This game is about leverage. So I, as a quarterback, I thought, you know, Pearson was, they were misaligned on the defensive side. I thought Pearson was outflanked, out, he out leveraged the defense, get it on him as fast as he can. Ty Story does a great job of extending the play and finding his third progression. But um, points are points. You know, it doesn't show if you hit your first read or your third read on the stat sheet. That's for danger. Fair catch by Ty Lee. Puts the ball at the 25 for the Blue Raiders with 7 14 left in the game. These drives are becoming more and more critical as the game goes on right here. I mean, this is a big one. Yeah, I thought the last one was big. Now this one's becoming big. It's, this is the signs of a good game. Both teams have seven points off of a turnover. So the Hilltopper score after the failed fake punt. Here's a long throw over the head of Ty Lee incomplete. Good route. Man, young, young receivers, if you want. Run that back. I don't know if you have a rewind, but Ty Lee runs an amazing route on this comeback. I was thinking, go, go, go. It's not so fast. Comes out of his break real fast. But, you know, long throw for a young quarterback. That's pretty tough. The rain has stopped a little bit here in the second half. It was pouring down in the first half. Wide open. A lot of room here. First down completion and more for Ali. Spins his way to the 46 for a gain of 21. That's Ali, wide open, baby. Uh, boom, boom to claw. He does a good job of making a guy miss. First, first reads that there, again, he, he gets off of him quickly on time. When you're on time as a quarterback, you can get run after catch, and that's what he does. Ali does a great job of making a couple guys miss, too. Four catches for 44 yards to lead the Blue Raiders today. Quarterback run for O'Hara, O'Hara. Works his way in a hilltop of territory. They put him down at the 49. Chocolate Me has been huge in the second half. They've been checking a lot of different plays, and hilltoppers are not checking the checker. Interesting. On second and six over the middle, he's got Marshall for a first down, his second catch of the day for the junior from Macon, Georgia. And now the Blue Raiders marching down the field. Clean pocket here, good feet by the young quarterback, uh, good protection up front. That's like pitching and catch playing seven on seven ball in the backyard when you, when you have such a clean pocket like that. I'm interested to see if the Hilltoppers heat him up a little bit. Mobley loses the football. There's a pile up around the 44. Who's got it? Western Kentucky football. Huge play. Getting a hat on the helmet there. That's exactly what they do. Gave the Mobley up. Shocked they gave it to him so many times in that drive. In the second half, they've been really force feeding Mobley here. Wow, big play in this game. Mobley. Off the left side, trying to figure out who hit him and then who recovered the football for the Hilltoppers. Here's the replay. Mobley gets it on the inside zone there and just coughs it up. Helmet on the helmet hits the ball right in the nose and causes a fumble. Hilltoppers do a good job of re r rallying to the ball. D'Angelo Malone was the first one that had a chance to recover it. He's not the one that came up with it. So Middle Tennessee, they've done such a good job the entire game of taking care of the football. Different story here in the second half. It's now three total turnovers, fumble, interception, and then the fake punt that did not work. So first and 10, here is Pearson, and Pearson weaves his way through all the traffic. He spins, trying to turn the corner. He stays on his feet. A flag is thrown. He is out of bounds around the 40. Oh, if God. this play stands, what an effort by Pearson. Unbelievable. A guy that you haven't really called his name much today. 
uh, makes his play, his presence felt when he catches that ball. Cuts back, makes a guy miss right here. Whoa. Hey, gets the Hilltopper guys, uh, the sideline up and at it, man. They got a lot of energy on that sideline right now. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 29. That is the first penalty of the game against Middle Tennessee. Wow. Especially in a rivalry game, that's shocking. So 521 left in the game. West Kentucky up by four. I think it's four down territory no matter Absol what. Absolutely, and I think they're taking a shot here. There's the face mask. That's pretty clear if you ask me. I think I'm taking a shot here if I'm off the coordinator. You got what you want, man coverage. He's running it left. There it is. Gage Walker with a gain of two, maybe three. It's almost like you know this offense or something. Yeah, just a little bit. Second and eight. Hilltoppers can take their time as well here. With the ball at the 23. And a four-point lead. What a day for Ty Stewart. 23 for 29. 294 yards and three total touchdowns. He's coming down here. Looks left, throws left. It's incomplete. A low throw for his intended target, Jernigan. He was the playmaker last drive. Had the back-to-back -back catches to get the Hilltoppers the go-ahead lead. A little slow with his feet, Ty Story was. I think you wanted to see him come out of his break. Sometimes those, those throws to the field, you got to get your feet in the ground as fast as you can and throw it out there uh, so DB can't react to it. He got cover zero. Uh, those DBs are taught to be played aggressive, especially on the outside. So when you catch the ball, got to throw it out there. You want Riyadh to catch. He, he throws that on time. Jernigan's one on one for a touchdown on that one. Here's the blitz. Story runs up the middle. He's at the 10. He lost the football, it looked like, and was able to recover it at the seven. That is impressive, man. Did he lose his shoe in the process? He lost the ball, he lost the shoe, he gained the first down. That's a zone read there. Tice reads it, reads it correctly, gets a seam right up the middle, does a great job of anticipating and being patient, letting his blockers develop and reading the hole, man. He does a great job of that being patient and finishing runs going forward. I think it was just his shoe. It looked like the football live. Here's Walker on the ground and Walker Leans in for a short pickup, second and goal. To take their time here. Middle Tennessee will use a timeout. It's their first, and this stops the clock with 3.33. Interesting. So, so out there. So Coach Stockstill counting on his defense. And with the timeout, we'll take one as well. 3.33, fourth quarter. Hilltoppers with a four-point lead. Looking for more when we return. Three thirty-three, fourth quarter. Four-point lead for the Hilltoppers, who have second and goal from the five. Walker's had a big day on the ground. Does not have a touchdown. But Story's been so good through the air. They will give it to Walker. Walker with a cut. A lunge in the end zone, and there's his first touchdown of the game to make it a 10-point lead for Western Kentucky. That felt like the dagger. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of time left in this game, two timeouts, but uh, it's a big play. Real power, one back power to the left. Gage Walker does a good job letting his blocks develop and is, is patient running into the end zone. It's his eighth rushing touchdown on the season. He now has the most 100-yard rushing games in the conference this year. Not too bad for somebody that was a cornerback a season ago. You're not kidding. Not even a season ago. He was in the spring became a running back. Like I said before in the, earlier in the broadcast, the, the, when I talked to Coach Elton about Gage Walker, it's just his film study, his understanding of the game, his understanding of his uh, you know, of the, the timing of everything, because every run is 
a different time to run. And uh, he's done a great job of being patient. You know, one back power like you see here, he just he hits it downhill, hits it in the right read, reading the right guys, reading the right gaps. And he's done a good job of that. And you don't expect that in year one from a defensive back. And um, he just capitalizes. He works hard in practice. When I talked to him in practice a couple times, uh, I compared him a little bit to Leon Allen. I don't know if that's a fair comparison. He's probably the best player I ever played with, but uh, just compared with him about his just his work ethic from a work ethic standpoint, how he communicates to everybody. No ego kid, and um, really excited about his future here at Western. And uh, they've done a good job with him, uh, just making it simple for him, running backs, coaches, and just all the way down the line. So uh, excited about his future. Excited about this offensive line and what they've done for him. And that helps. You got an offensive line that's had so much experience playing the game. Uh, that that'll make life a lot easier for a inexperienced running back. So after the Middle Tennessee fumble, that was a six-play, 56-yard scoring drive by the Hilltoppers. It took two minutes and four seconds. Here's a squib, and it will be picked up around the 21. And Hilltoppers are all over it. That's Mobley again. So. Now here is the Blue Raider offense, Brandon. They're not designed to score quickly. They do have two timeouts to work with with 324 left in the game. Yeah, I think you got to, it's a good evaluation if you're Rick Scoxdale, where you're at as a team, where you're at as an offensive line, where you are as your playmakers, who are your playmakers going forward. So and you know you got a, a signal caller and Asher O'Hara, and, and so I'd like to see what he comes up with here in a two minute drive. It's gonna be a really a two minute situation for the kid going forward. And they have a jet sweep to start this drive and West Kentucky again not fooled by it as the Blue Raiders might have lost a yard to kick off this drive. Jones again in on the stop. What a day that he has had defensively today for West Kentucky. That's his fifth tackle. He also has a sack today. Well, you got to kind of throw the ball. I think about maybe uh, throwing the ball, but protecting your quarterback, not making sure he uh, keeps his confidence going into the next season. He's in trouble, and down he goes. It's another sack for D'Angelo Malone, the most sacks in the Conference USA this year. That kid's just licking his chops, knowing they got to throw the ball down two scores here under three minutes left in this game. So uh, great play by D'Angelo Malone. He's got another season here on the Hill, and that'll be exciting if you're a Hilltopper fan to see him in action again next year. It's now 11 total sacks. He's put on 30 pounds since he arrived on campus. O'Hara, third and long, he will now take off. A nice move and gets drilled at the 27-yard line. What a hit by Kyle Bailey. Wow. You know, I haven't seen Asher get hit like that all game. I don't think I've seen him get hit in the last three or four games like that. And that Tyson Helton is going to have to burn a timeout, and he's livid as you get another uh, look at that hit. West Kentucky was too busy celebrating the hits, and they had people uh, on the Middle Tennessee side of the line of scrimmage, and Blue Raiders were getting ready to snap it, and it would have been a first down with a penalty flag, so it's fourth and three. That's a head coach's nightmare right there. But great play by Asher, not forcing the ball. Young quarterbacks will force the ball there in that situation. He don't play like a young quarterback. Takes a shot, pays for it a little bit, but. You know, hey, sometimes that's a part of the game, especially if you're running this much and you're going to lead the team in rushing as well. So it's fourth and three. Middle Tennessee is two for three today on fourth down. The one time they did not get it, it was the failed fake punt. Right, you got to you got to think Malone's just chomping at the bits here. No, they're going to have to throw it around here in the fourth quarter. He's standing up <laughs> at the top of the screen. He's probably foaming at the mouth thinking about hitting the, hit the quarterback again here. Fourth and three. There is D'Angelo Malone, and O'Hare avoids him and lunges across the 30. They spot him at the 33, or the 32, but he's got it. Got to go. Got to go. Get the play in. Get the call in. Communicate and go. And they will stop the clock to measure this. With a minute 50 left in the game, Middle Tennessee with two timeouts remaining. Harris acting like he, somebody ran the wrong route. He's a little upset. 
whether it's the receivers, maybe his coaching staff, just maybe a little frustrated. Maybe somebody ran the wrong route there. It looked, kind of looked like there was a little bit of a miscommunication on that last play. I think he's got it. Yeah, easily got it. I almost a full football. Shows you the athlete he is because he had D'Angelo Malone bearing down on him and was able to, to avoid him. He did. He came off pretty clean, too. Speed rush right by that fair left tackle, and, and Asher does a good job avoiding him and picking up the first down. That's positive. See, that's positive news going into another season. I know, yeah, maybe not win this one, but you, you got a quarterback that you can build off. You, you can do a lot of amazing things as a team. Going up top. Oh, and it's dropped. Another nice throw to Pierce. Coverage by Deontay Ruffin. I actually think that they need to push the ball vertically a little bit more going forward into a new season. I think Asher throws, that's his strength. He throws the deep ball really well. He hasn't missed inside, hasn't been late to throws. He does a pretty good job of getting, giving his receivers a chance. And so another thing that they can, they can definitely, you know, improve on and something that they can build on this Middle Tennessee offense. First down catch by Ali, who was slow to get up. Ali has had a good day. That's his fifth catch to lead the Blue Raiders this afternoon. Let's see if he stays on the field. He's going to come off. Just wasting clock. Stay down. He's going to stay down. Under 90 seconds left in the game. O'Hara over the middle, it's incomplete. That was the new receiver that just checked in and Tyrese Johnson. So Ali went off, Johnson came in and O'Hara goes right to him. A little scary over that middle now, especially your first catch of the game coming off the sideline cold. O'Hara has been able to spread the football today. Six different receivers. Play action on second and 10. Over the middle, leaping catch made by Marshall at the sticks, and they may measure this one. Jimmy Marshall with his third catch, and they signal first down, so that'll stop the clock. That's a nice, that is a nice way to keep your quarterback in rhythm. That's a great, great to see as a coach. You know, a guy going up there and getting that ball in the middle, especially when you need it most. Quarterback run for O'Hara, O'Hara. Balls forward inside the 40. And what do you think about a timeout? If you're Middle Tennessee here, they will use one. So Blue Raiders are down to one timeout with 105 left in the game. They're kind of not playing to win this game. They're just kind of trying to play to run some plays because that, that's a head shake between the box. I think you've got to throw the ball, either throw it in completion or try to get out of bounds. Quarterback run at this moment in time, I don't think that does much for you. Well, a possibility, you can't attempt a long field goal, and if you're successful, you're still only down one score. So that is a possibility, field goal, onside kick. And the elements aren't really a factor right now. It looks like the kicker's kind of warming up right now on sideline, but um, elements aren't really a factor. I think you get 10, 15 more, you kick a field goal, try to get an onside kick, make this a one possession game, and uh, maybe pray you get, a, get one. Well, I've, I've seen some crazy stuff at this stadium, that's for dang sure. Uh, if you are thinking field goal, Cruz Holtz, he's been good from 46 this season. That's his long. Coach Stock still told us that he is comfortable uh, with him from about 50 yards out, which is the max. Yeah. So it's second and five. Middle Tennessee with one timeout remaining. Marshall's down in the 10. Wow. I thought he was going to throw the slant. I thought he missed him high. He threw a, it was just a little slant smash concept. I thought he threw the slant high. Tipped in and hey, better to be lucky than good sometimes. So now you don't have to worry about the field goal. Play action. O'Hare oh, looks left, looks right, pump fakes. Up for grabs in the end zone. He's got Marshall out there and it's broken up, incomplete. Good play. 
Marshall's been the go-to target. He scored a touchdown in the last four games. He's got the most touchdown receptions this year for the Blue Raiders. Every ball that is thrown here from here out, young quarterbacks, needs to be in the end zone. If it's not in the end zone, it needs to be a 100% that they're going to get, get out of bounds. So note that if you come in this situation, uh, if you're playing situational football at home, this ball needs to be in the end zone. Either our guy's going to catch it or nobody's going to catch it. In front of the end zone, it's a low ball. If it's a back of the end zone, it's a high ball. Looks right, throws right. He's got Ty Lee, makes the catch in the end zone for the touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown strike to Ty Lee and the Blue Raiders, making things awfully interesting with 43 seconds left in the game. What a catch. Third touchdown catch this year for Ty Lee. It's another touchdown toss for Asher O'Hara. No foul on the play. No foul. Yeah, there was a flag in the back of the end zone on the U of WKU, and then whatever that conversation was, they determined that it was not enough for a penalty marker. And now Middle Tennessee is going for two. If they convert, it'll be a field goal game. So, so they, a little Formation to the boundary. It looks like you're trying to get a little miscommunication on the defensive side, especially in two-point two play. Expect motion maybe a little bit here. There, you go. there is the motion. O'Hara rolling left. He's in all kinds of trouble. Now we're going to reverse fields. He's in trouble, and down he goes by Devin Key. That was a huge stop by Devin Key in West Kentucky. And now he thinking onside kick obviously here for the Blue Raiders who have not had a successful onside kick this year. Yeah, design run all the way there. I don't know about that call. I thought maybe give him a pass option there. He couldn't really throw it because he had linemen downfield. So, uh, head scratcher. But I thought they, they made a little bit of a, tried to do a little bit, tried to be a little cute with it. Formation to the boundary. They had numbers, three receivers to the boundary. Brought the guy in motion, trying to get an overflow to the field with all that space out there. And throwing a quarterback sneak the other way, quarterback run the other way. I just thought there was a little bit too much going on there. So now onside kick time. It didn't rain. It's rained all morning and the entire first half on this artificial surface. What's your best strategy for an onside kick? Kick it. <laughs> it's been good this year for West Kentucky. They have two successful onside kick recoveries. Middle Tennessee is 0 for 1 in this department this season. These are always exciting. I don't care what side you're on, sideline you're on. These are always exciting. You just nip the, the element of unknown. It's like Tyson called the timeout. Yeah, Tyson Helton will use a timeout. One remaining for the Hilltoppers. Get your hands team out there where you want them. I think this would be more a little bit more interesting if we got a little rain. We, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm, I, I'm maybe, maybe no rain. I, 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 I take that completely back. So 43 seconds left in the game. West Kentucky holding on to a 31-26 lead in the 69th meeting all time in Conference USA's oldest and most played rivalry game. West Kentucky searching for their eighth win on the season. Middle Tennessee trying to play spoiler, looking for their fifth win. I think my only no-no, and maybe it's just a pet peeve and a personal preference, but the little squib kick to the kicker. I don't really like that. The little go 10, let the kicker try to outrun the ball and pick it up at 10 yards. I don't really like that one, I think. You give your guys that touch the ball a little bit more a chance at it. Well, this is Cruz Holt that will kick it, and West Kentucky will counter with Lucky Jackson and Quinn Jernigan. Seniors. They're both around the 45. The official just made an announcement that each team has one timeout left. Transparency. 
And they'll squib it up the middle, and this will be touched by West Kentucky. It's still loose. Who's got it in midfield? Hilltoppers come out of the pile with it. Wow, how close was that? Goodness gracious. A little 100 miles of hate into this game here. Who knows what happens in the bottom of those piles, man. There still hasn't officially been a signal yet. There's not. On whose football it is. But the Hilltoppers did have a player come out of the pile with it. We had illegal touching. The ball was touched to nine yards. Recovered by the receiving team. The ball will be placed at the spot of the first touching. First down, Western Kentucky. So it was touched before 10 yards by Middle Tennessee, recovered anyway by the Hilltoppers. There it is. Who are 38 seconds away from coming out of here with win number eight on the season. I can't, you can't talk about the job Tyson Helton has done with this football team enough. I mean, you go from winning three games last year and uh, relatively just kind of having a really rough year to in one year turning that into a plus five in the wood column. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. You ask me at any level of play, especially division one football. So he's done an amazing job just sticking with it, sticking with his offense and, and adjusting, especially after, you know, the first game of the season doesn't go as well as you want it to go. And so uh, kudos to him, kudos to what the job he's done here on the hill. And uh, I'm sure they're happy to have him back. Yeah, there you see Tyson Helton, and you did touch on season opener loss to Central Arkansas, go on the road at FIU and win. And when that victory happened, Tyson Helton said he knew he had a special team, and he felt like that victory in week two, uh, West Kentucky was able to turn the corner a little bit. And what a job that he has done as the Hilltoppers win. 31 to 26, what a game, what a finish. A, a fantastic game from start to finish. And uh, I think the difference in this game was the second half turnovers. Like we kind of talked at the half, middle turned it over uh, way too much. Hilltoppers uh, didn't turn it over and there you go, you gotta win. So for my analysts, Brandon Dowdy, I'm Graham Doty saying so long from Bowling Green, Kentucky, where the final score, Hilltoppers 31, Blue Raiders 26. All games airing on the ESPN Networks, streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.